Supper.
Democrat is so deep in hell, they're having lunch with Satan and dinner. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. 
We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. How y'all? Amazing. You can get involved by calling 888-775-3773. 888-77-JESSE. J-E-S-S-E. JESSE. My biblical question for this week, and it's a doozy. My biblical question, what's trapping you? What's trapping you? You ever ask yourself that? What's trapping me? I, I, I really want, I, 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 I sound like Obama. I, 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 I'm a warrior. Um, I really want to encourage you out there in the world to work on you. Really. I don't know if anyone ever encouraged you to do that. And I mean work on you from within. Yeah, you could exercise, do all that. Nothing wrong with that for sure. But work on your spirit from within. You're going to be amazingly surprised at the outcome. It's like words cannot express. We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And you can also be listening to the show on your iPhone or iPad. Anywhere in the world. Because we are heard around the world by everybody and their mama. And if you're a flat earther, we're heard up and down the world by everybody and their mama. So you can be listening to the show. You can podcast later if you can't sit and watch it now. You can definitely podcast. You can be listening on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641 793 one five zero zero six four one seven nine three one five zero zero. We're on X JLP Talk on X, Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram, and also remember to subscribe and follow JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Rush, rush, rush! Run, don't walk. Subscribe, like, follow, and all that good stuff. Now, so to the new listeners, those who may have not heard the show, you tune in for the first time, I want you to know we take all calls on Thursdays, but Thursday is Bible Thumper Thursday. All right, brother. Are you ready? He's drunk as a badger. (laughs) Go ahead. Let that Holy Ghost language come up out of you. Go ahead. Fire. Bible Thumper Thursday. And Bible Thumper Thursday is, I realize, in every aspect of life, there are somebody, one or two people who need, who kind of want understanding. They want they need help. They want to be pointed to the right way. Some don't. Most people don't. Most people absolutely love their hell. And then they're trying to friends their hell upon others because they aren't working for evil. But there are some people into the Bible that really, you know, I read the Bible, but it's not really helping. But then there are those Bible quoters who think that they got it. So we open it up to all the Bible thumping people. We take all calls. Up. And um, a quick reminder to donate and have your comments read out loud. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP talk or rebuildingdemand.com. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk or Rebuilding the Man. 
dot com. I um, some of you may have woke up this morning or during the night because a lot of folks sleep and live on their cell phone twenty four hours a day. They wake up in the middle of the night and and, and get on the cell phone. What the? Um, some of you may have woke uh, awakened this morning. Uh, to some news that there was an outage last night or during the night. And I wonder, what is is this real? What is this all about? If it really happened, who made it happen and why? Because so much is happening in America today that's abnormal. That is mind-blowing. We are truly a third-world country now. And uh, ain't no stopping it. Ain't no stopping it. They are on the move. And so if it's true that there was an outage, I wonder, and I don't know, but I wonder, was it an accident? Or was it planned? Or is it being prepped for a plan later? You know what I mean? It's nice to question things. So that you know that you know that you know. So according to the New York Post, a major cell phone outage affected users across the U.S. early Thursday, even stopping some police departments from being able to receive 911 calls. The cause of the outage, however, remains unclear. So they're saying they don't know. Why did this happen? Why? 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 So I'm just wondering, I'm black and slow. Was it an accident? This one, were they doing a test? Why did this happen? Did it really happen? Is it a test for something down the road? Just wondering. Because the one thing that is happening in the world and it happening inside of human beings is there is evil. There is good, and there is evil. And evil in my country is having its way right now, it seems. It seems. So did this happen? Is it happening because there are some people who are truly waking up? There are some people who are waking up. And here is an example of some people waking up. Watch this from X. Just gonna give you a little backstory on how I switched from a Democrat to a full on Republican. Growing up black, I mean that's you what black. you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be a Democrat. That's that's all that's all you knew. I mean that's all I knew. And um it, it's crazy because I was so blind. I remember believing that the Democratic Party cared. They cared. They were going to do what was right. That's what I was told. And not paying attention that these politicians are just capitalizing off of strife, pain, etc. They really don't care. They were using pain pain to get a vote and I just woke up one day amazing it's amazing it's interesting how one or two people wake up majority never wakes up but one or two and it it's, it's a new word. It's in the Bible. Only a few will find that straight and narrow path. Most won't. That is so interesting to me. And that's why when I talk to people, I, I really want to understand what was it about you that caused you to want to see or to endure whatever came at you and, and just endure it. Some people have it, most people don't. 
Most people were given to evil just like that, inside themselves and outside of themselves, inside of others. That was deep. With them. I just heard that. My producer told me about it this morning, Char, but I didn't hear it until right now, and it was deep. And as I said yesterday, that the government is only a body of human beings who nature is evil, they have no love, and they are just like non-governmental people. You, it's all, every human being has to deal with evil until you overcome it. And the government is just a body of human beings that has not overcome evil, and they are about themselves as individuals. They are not even care about each other. It's all about what they can get. And he's right. This man is right. They use pain. They use fear. You notice the devil always try to use fear and shame to control you. And they have done that with the blacks for 70 years or so, give or take. Right on to this guy. And here uh, is uh, that same man talking about the great white hope, Donald Trump. Watch this from X. Start to realize that Democrats only care about our, my, my, my people's vote. They really don't care about our people. Even if they have the same skin color. Obama was trash. <laughs> Donald Trump is the greatest president of my lifetime. Yeah. He, was on, he, st he stood on that stage and said, what do you got to lose? Look how much African-American communities have suffered under democratic control. To those I say the following. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? You're living in poverty. Your schools are no good. You have no jobs. 58% of your youth is unemployed. What the hell do you have to lose? I'm full on MAGA, I'm full on conservative. And there's more like me, believe me. Amazing. Amazing. That's deep. Absolutely deep. It's just the way it is. There are some people that's gonna wake up, most are not. Most are not. Right on. Good for that guy. I haven't seen that part either. That's deep, young man. Stay with it. The interesting thing about waking up, it leads to more awakening. It really does. Especially if you stay with it and you want it. And you want it. I think about I reflect on the great white hope, Donald Trump. And and I still have a uh, an image of him coming, he and his wife coming down that stairs when he first announced years, a couple of years, a few years ago now that he was running and he became the president. It was just coming down the stairs was powerful. And then making the announcement was, it was different. And Eva said, no. Uh-uh. I'm not going to let Donald Trump be a good example. I'm going to fight him come hell or high water. And they never stopped. They used every soul that they can find on this earth to go after Donald Trump. And that's going to happen to you. It's happening to a lot of people already who are waking up. They tell me all the time during counseling, we have the best counseling service on this side of heaven, family, individual, um, whatever, counseling service. Go to rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com, or um, um, call 800-411-BOND. But people are telling me all the time now, those who are truly waking up and they are, they're dying, their ego is dying, they're like, of all races, too, it's interesting. My family turned on me. My friends turned on me. People are coming after me now. What do I do? And you know what I tell them? 
do nothing. You have the greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world working on your behalf. You don't have to do anything. Just don't hate them. Don't get angry. They cannot help themselves. They're evil and don't. And they love that evil. They don't want to change. They want to help Satan drag in as many souls as possible. They work overtime. And, but they can't get to the great white hope. I don't know how this thing going to turn out for him as president or all these fake lawsuits going after him. But I absolutely appreciate his example of how to deal with the world. And you can do it too if you connect with the right source inside of you. So good right on to this guy from waking up. And you can tell as far as that, he see what's going on now with the Democratic Party. And that means the black representatives and the white liberals have done to the blacks. And speaking of good Christian women, men ask me all the time, well, Jesse, how can I find a good Christian woman? Should I go and look for a good Christian woman? And I say, no. If you look for a good Christian woman, you're going to find Satan sitting right up in the church. Number one, you're not supposed to see or look for anything but God. You're supposed to be wanting for nothing. So if you want for nothing, how are you going to look for a Christian woman? That's how you make sense. That's how you make sense, right? If I don't know what I want, if I don't know what I need, if I don't even know what to ask us for, why do I think I need to look for something or want for something or someone? You know there has to be an influence from hell. Oh, your problem is you need a family. You need a woman. You need a man. You need a husband. Say, say to the women. That doesn't make sense. How come you need to yell at the devil? No, devil. That doesn't make sense. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I need. I don't know what to ask for. And of myself, I can do nothing. Why are you telling me I need to want or look for it? And if you look for it, you're going to end up with a female like Fanny Willis. Really? And this is so typical in the blacks that it's not even funny. If you notice, the blacks reward good, I mean evil, and they hate good. They ain't going to reward good. Some of you white people are not going to believe that this happened, maybe. Or maybe you just understand the blacks now and it's not, nothing is new to you. According to Gazette.com, and some of you know that Fannie Willis woman is the one that, the so-called D, DA, that's trying to go after the great white hope, can you imagine? And she black. A nasty woman. A nasty female. Right out the pit of hell. The gates of hell. So from the Gazette.com, Fannie Willis, the district attorney of Fulton County, Georgia, spoke at the Atlanta Berean Church this weekend while accepting the Black History Achievement Award. Watch this from X. You know, people keep sending me scriptures, and I, and I appreciate those scriptures, but different people from all different walks of life keep sending me this one scripture, and I don't think I ever really heard it till to maybe two days ago. You, people send you stuff, you read them, they just kind of become things you recite, but you don't really think about what they say. The scripture they keep sending me is, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Just because they won't prosper, it doesn't mean that they won't form. Even if you feel like everything you are doing in your life is the right thing, and you're making mistakes all along the way, but you're trying. You should not think that 
those weapons will not form. The other lesson that I've learned in this three years is God ordains those weapons. He puts those weapons in your life to form against you. And if you really understand him, you become in your maturity to understand he does it for a reason and it's to grow you and it's to make you stronger and it is to prepare you. Isn't that amazing? And those weak beta men sit by there holding their hands. What the? She's lying. God does not put anything in your way like that. That is a bald-faced lie. And this is the devil quoting the scriptures. This is evil quoting the scriptures. It's intellectual. But she's worshiping the devil. And they gave her an award in a black church. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. And they wonder why their lives as individuals are not getting better. They just rewarded evil. And they say that, according to report, Fanny Willis grew up close to her father. And if you saw her father in court, you understand. Just like daddy, just like daughter, both are lost. According to the New York Post, I want to just make the point, you heard the devil quote the scripture in the church and the congregation, amen, God, and gave it applause. And they, they're standing there, those males standing there trying to look holy. Playing the devil's game in a building called church. Am I wrong? According to the New York Post, John Floyd III, the father of Fannie Willis, is extremely close to his daughter. He must be just like his mama. Because he was not good for her. He was not good for her. Period. And here's why. According to the New York Post and the DailyMail.com, Floyd was a prominent black panther who called police the enemy. He gave testimony that she was always made, that she always made efforts to keep cash in the house and that he instructed her to do so. Watch this from Forbes. Did she say anything to you about having a large uh, savings of cash? Oh, no, she, oh, no. See, <laughs> maybe, excuse me, and I, Your Honor, I'm not trying to be racist, okay? But it's a black thing, okay? You know, there ain't no black I was trained. I like you selling drugs. And most black folks, they hide cash or they keep cash. And uh, I was, I've always kept cash, I, you know, and I've told my daughter, you keep six months worth of cash always. And as a matter of fact, I gave my daughter uh, her first cash box and told her, always keep some cash. <laughs> so is that a yes? Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's all I got, Jess. Amazing. I ain't never heard nothing like that. And he was a quote unquote par, par, uh, permanent, prominent Black Panther. I re it reminded me, I reflected when I heard that he was a Black Panther person. I remember I lived in Alabama, right? And then during the summer, I would go up to Indiana to visit. And my parents in Indiana would not allow me and my siblings to go over to Chicago because they are afraid that we may get killed, beat up, or robbed by the Black Panthers. Because, according to them, that at the time the Black Panthers were, out, Panthers were out of control and people were afraid of them. Even the blacks were afraid. I remember that still, sir. I don't know how true it was because I didn't go over there. I stayed away from the blacks. What's wrong with the blacks? And so the Black Panthers ain't not, is not something you need to be proud of. And I never heard keep cash in the house. 
It ain't no black thing, maybe in his black world, but no one ever said keep, not to me or anyone I know. You black, keep cash in the house. Maybe with some black people who are tripping. And also in New York Post is reporting that Floyd also called a prominent white politician a Texas cracker. Watch this from X. Uh, after the election, I was so pissed off at that. How could this Texas cracker come here and run the black community? I was just livid. Who about, are you referring to? Um, uh, Jesse Hunter, Hunter, Big Daddy Fat Texas Cracker. Okay. Hunter, okay. Him. Okay. <laughs> he is ticked. Never made the black people angry. Don't make the black girl, what's that book called, James, by my friend? Don't make the black girl mad or something? Yeah, don't make the black kids angry. Y'all need to read that book. According to the New York Post, Willis told the Post she speaks to her father as much as 10 times a day. What the? And that his value continued to guide her. And no wonder she's so crazy. You're so crazy. It's a spiritual battle, folks. It has nothing to do with color. There's evil and there's good. You're already under the umbrella of evil. Choose good. Choose good. Get away from the color. Get away from the group thinking. Start thinking for yourself and freedom will reign. It will come. As a matter of fact, it's already at hand. It's just waiting for you to reach out for it. Reach in for it. Freedom comes from within. You were created to have perfect peace. You were not created to have fear and doubt and worry, suicidal thought, thoughts, loneliness, insecurity, afraid to stand alone, identify with color, uh, uh, and all this mess. You were created to be free. You were created to have perfect peace right here on earth right now. Really. I promise you that in spite of what's happening out there inside of others, you, you are your world and you're protected from the hell of others. You were created to have peace. Christ came that you may have peace and yet you have fear. You have a fastness of happiness. You have worry, suicidal thought, jealous and envy and strife and revenge. There's no peace in that, and that's not normal. 888-7753-773. When I come back, black, your phone calls and super chats. Baba Thumper. <laughs> You can't run from evil within yourself or outside of self. You got to deal with it. And you need good in order to deal with evil. And God is good. You need to return to the Father. And you'll see within you, he will fight the battle for you. And he will fight it without because he will show you how to deal with it. And you will have no fear. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, along with nothing else. Nothing else means yourself, your children, your wife, your things, your ego, your reputation, and all that. You can't care about any of that. The children of anger will use it to control you. But if you love God, he will renew your mind, and none of those things will be before him. And so when they go after you, oh, well, you may take my body, you may take my things, but you're not going to take my soul. And that's a true reality.
I want to mention this really fast, and because I'm asked, ask about it every, nearly everywhere I go. People want to know if, if my seven guarantee step is still available on Kindle. I think it's Kindle. Yeah, Kindle. I'm like, yeah, it is. You can get it in paperback now. The seven guarantee step to spiritual, family, and financial success guide. We have it in paperback again, but you can also get it on uh, uh, Kindle and audio books, book. Go to rebuildingtheman.com slash store, and there's a little link there to Amazon.com where you can purchase the book, The Seven Guarantee Step to Spiritual, Family, and Financial Success Guide. Uh, financial Success Guide. And, uh, but you can also order in paperback now. It's just a little small pocket guide that I use to uh, uh, the uh, principles that I use when I first started my first business in this because I knew nothing about business, so I just took it one day at a time. I didn't go to business school or ask, ask some expert and all that crap. And so it was really helpful, and if you use it, it will work. And um, Hassan, I want to know, is that me walking across the green, green of pasture? No. It looks like a white man. <laughs> what the? <laughs> I'm white on the inside, not on the black outside, black on the outside. But I, I'll sign it for you, too, to whomever you like. You go to rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com, or call 800-411-BOND. It's amazing little pocket guy. All my books are amazing. All right? And then the other thing is if you want personalized shout-outs, I do them myself. Personalized shout-outs. Birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, encouragement, whatever the shout-out is, you can go to Cameo. C A M E O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson, and I'll do them for you. All right, just people asking about those things, they like to the shout out and the books. Um, let me go to Alice, a first time caller out of uh, New Jersey. Alice, welcome to the show. You're on the air, Jesse Beta. Amazing, amazing. How are you today? All is well, Alex. Thanks for calling. Thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. Um, I uh, I have an Obama phone. Can you hear me all right? Loud and clear. Awesome. Great. No, I am actually just calling to tell you, like, uh, for 10 years, you know, my parents got divorced when I was around, I don't know, five years old or something like that. And all I would always hear about him, he's a cheater, he's a this, he's a that. You know, I'm five, six, seven. My whole life, I grew up hating my dad. If that makes any sense, you know, because I'm just, you know, taking her word for it. And I'm too young to really understand what's going on. Yeah. So long story short, I didn't talk to him for like eight years because I just took my mom's word that he was a no good guy and this and that. So I just, uh, I, I listened, I started listening to your show about eight years ago. Alex, phone drop. Amazing. Your phone drop, Alex. Call back. 888-775-3773. Let me go to Canada. First time caller, James, out of Canada. James, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thanks, Jesse. Good morning. How are you? All is well, James. So I had a, I had a question for you. I, I had... Actually, I had a, a meeting with you last week, like a counseling meeting, which was really great. And I forgave my mom. I forgave my dad. Um, so that went well. I had a I had a question though about forgiving my ex wife. Is that something that I need to do in the same sense that I had to forgive my mom and forgive my dad? Well, my you know, ex wife. What, um, what did she do sorry, to you? She, well, she. She cheated in our relationship, and then she left and took my kid. Oh, I see. Well, look, and so I've carried a lot of anger around about that, and I'm wondering if that's some, like, if I should yeah, forgive her. Yeah, you as well. forgive her. The one thing I want to promise you, James, 
uh, and this is for the world to know, there is never, ever, ever, ever a reason to be angry. Never, no matter mm -hmm. what. No matter what happens to you, there is never, ever, ever a reason to be angry because when you understand what's been driving you, the hell in you, what's driving you to do the things you have done, it will help you understand that that's what's driving every other human being evil, right? And that they right. cannot help themselves. They just can't help it. Their, their, their nature is evil, and the devil is driving them. They can't help it. And in knowing that, it is impossible to become angry. So forgive her and move on with your life. Okay. Yeah. That's that's yeah. That's what I was what I was thinking. And uh, yeah, I've, I'd never really heard anybody ask you about that before, and I was wondering yeah. if it was the same thing. No, that, and you don't even have to call her up or contact her to forgive you. Forgive your parents, and that means the spirit of anger is no longer you. Stop identifying with it, and in that you will start to live a life of forgiveness. And when the devil come after you in your mind and emotions or outside of you, inside of others, it won't touch you at all. You'll be fine. Okay. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Let her, wish her well and let her stay in her hell. I will. All right, buddy. Okay. Thank you, Jesse. You're welcome. Amazing. There's never, ever, but never, 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 ever a reason to be angry. I don't care if there's nothing that can happen to you that justifies anger. Anger is evil. Let me go to Danny out of Bulgaria. Danny, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello, Mr. Peterson. Hope you're doing well, sir. All is well, Danny. Amazing. How are you? Amazing. I'm pretty well. Uh, I'm uh, calling with a very interesting story. Uh, you, I, I've heard it ten times, ten thousand times on your program. The last four years, I've been listening. Like, and uh, I guess this one's another one. My grandmother, you know how how they are. My grandmother was an angel. Well, my grandmother was an angel as well, Mr. Peterson. Until I realized everything. <laughs> uh, a long story short, she she was a doctor, and so was my grandfather. My grandfather had a tremendous illness at his last years, and. Purely out of ego, and I'm I'm being able to see it just now. He died a long time ago. Yeah. Instead of sending him to a hospital, this woman kept him at home because she's a doctor. She knows what she's doing. She's better than everybody. And she kept this poor man alive for five years. Five years of pure agony and hell. I was a child when that happened. I couldn't do anything about it. Amazing. But but she, uh, we even made jokes about that. Uh, we called her Dr. Frankenstein because she kept a living corpse like that. This, this was ridiculous. But she did it anyway. And now, about a month ago, my father had some tremendous uh, sickness. Uh, she's not well at all. My mother is a dentist. You know, the, uh, my, the grandmother and the grandfather I was talking about, those are her parents. And they were doctors. My mother is a dentist. She's also a doctor. And she actually said, I'm not sending your father to a hospital. I'm a doctor. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to keep it home, keep him home. And if I lost my nerve back then, things would have been way, way worse. I remained calm. And I sat, her next, I sat next to her. I said, listen, you're acting like your mother. You, you remember what your mother did to her husband? You, my grandmother to her my grandpa, you, you remember that? That's exactly what you're doing now. And I have never seen my mother like that. She looked at me as like like I caught the devil <laughs> listening to the hate news. That's how she looked like. Uh, and she looked at me and said, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't even knew. I said, I'm telling you, I, I, I was 16 years old when that happened, when my grandmother did this to my grandfather. I'm 33 now. I will not allow you to do this thing because my father has tremendous pain. He's not well at all. I said, no matter how good of a dentist you are, how good of a doctor, you can't do this. You need a specialized facility. It's called a hospital. And he has to be over there. There's no other way around. I was emotional. I, I saw the emotion. I was angry, actually. But I saw the anger as well. 
Uh, and I just sat her down and said, listen, that's not going to happen. This, if I gave in to my anger, to my emotions, history would have repeated itself. Yeah. Because she would have do it out of spite as well. I didn't. Yeah. I, I, I remained calm. So that, that's just not going to happen. So for about a week now, she's in a hospital. I don't know if she's going to get better or not. It's a pretty, pretty rough sickness. But no matter what, it's better for a sick man to be in a hospital. Amazing. And I really wanted to use that. Yeah, I wanted to use that example. It's literally something that happened last month and is happening now. And I wanted to share this with you because you're right about that. It doesn't matter where you're from. The devil is the devil everywhere. And if you don't pay attention to him, he will make a number on you. Absolutely. And, and then you will live to it. And that's why I wanted to, to call you and to, to tell you that, Mr. Peterson, because your message is tremendous. It's very, very remarkable. Amazing, sir, Danny. Thank you, man. And through all things, be patient because yep. once you overreact, the devil got you. All of my problems, every single one of them that I can remember, were because I was angry. I was I didn't, yep. wasn't able to see properly. Yeah. And I blamed others a lot. Uh, and that's that's what generated even bigger problems. Amazing, and sir. Thank you, man. When I'm not like that, things are better. Mr. Peterson, kind regards to your colleagues in the audience. God be with you, sir, and thank you for your work. Sincerely. Amazing. You're welcome. And stay with us, stay with us, stay with it. Right on. Bye, sir. Bye, Danny. Thank you, buddy. Amazing. 888-7753-773. Alex is back from New Jersey. First time call. Alex, let's try it again. Jesse, sorry, my Obama phone acted up. I just paid the bill. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So, no, like I was saying is um, uh, I listened to my mother, but then um, I took it upon my – and I was an alcoholic, drug addict, you know, all that stuff. I was just a smoking pot. So everything that my mom said, I would kind of like, you know, sympathize with her and everything. But as I got older, I said to myself, you know, I'm going to talk to my dad on my own. And when I did – Man, this guy was the happiest. I've never seen my dad cry in my whole life before. So, like, when I went to when I went to him and, um, you know, I started talking to him again, he started, like, you know, crying and saying, I never thought you'd come back and this and that. And long story short, man, we have such a good relationship now. I forgave my mother because, like you always say, like, I, I can't believe how true it is. Like, you know, they turn you away from your dad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's like... They they want to think that they have a relationship with you. It's some weird kind of thinking, man. You know what I mean? But, like, so I just took her word for it, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, yeah, I'm very happy where I am now with them, though. And I just wanted to thank you for, uh, you know, kind of just putting that word out there and, you know, me listening and taking your advice. That's an amazing story, Alice. Life is about a return to the Father. There will come a day when I return the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children. And um, that's now. That's what's missing. That's what's needed with all children all around the world. And it means adult children as well, not just little children. That's amazing. What did your mother say when you went and forgave her? Oh, my gosh. She started screaming at me. She <laughs> screamed. <laughs> yeah. She's like, what do you mean, forgive? And, oh, man, when I told her that I started talking to my pops again, she got pissed off at that. I'm like, man, it's my dad. Like, yeah. you know, it's like some weird, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's like I had to get her approval to do what I want. You know what I'm saying? But this was like also eight years ago. But still, it's like, you know, she was upset about the whole thing, about me forgiving her, about uh, me talking to my dad again. And I just, I, me and my dad have the best relationship ever now. You know what I mean? So it's right awesome on, man. Women, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mothers hate children, both boys and girls. They hate children who love their fathers. They hate them, and they'll destroy that child if he or she dare to try to get close to their father. And even in some case, if the child looked like the father, it's over. It, oh it's, my gosh. <laughs> Why do you say that? She says that to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. They That's hate. Weird stuff. Because a child that looked like the father is, it reminds her all the time how much she hates the father and she will destroy you. What a mess. Congratulations, man. Stay with it. It only gets better. 
Thank you. And last thing before I let you go, uh, my dad is from Colombia, right? So uh, he's Spanish. I don't know how you say it. Or he's Hispanic, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Uh, but he's from Colombia. And, uh, you know, his my grandfather, his dad came here legally, and it took him four years. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just have to say, like, there's 7.1 million uh, illegal aliens that have came in here that, you know, Biden has let in. But I just wanted to say, like, people have to do it the right way, man, because yeah. there's the right way. And, you know, we're sheltering these guys with our tax dollars. It's so stupid. I just want everyone, you know, we got to get our, our Trump back in to, uh, you know, fix this mess. What a mess. Thank you, Alex. Amazing story, you, man. Jesse. Okay. God bless. Thank you. You too. Life is about a return to the Father. Everyone, anyone, everyone who has anger, Satan is your God. Really. Satan nature is anger, and so is yours. And your nature is evil. There's no love in it. And you try to cover it up, but people who are waking up can see it. They can see that you're evil. They can absolutely see it. There's one line open, 888-7753-773-888-77 Jesse. Super chat. Super chat. Super super. super. Chats. Good morning, Jesse. J O P. Hey. Priscilla from Houston bought a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Jesse, don't act like a black mama to the dogs. LOL. Lots of laughs. Who let the dogs out? What's a black mama to the dogs? This was... I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe you're mean to the dogs. I don't even have a dog. Maybe you eat up all the ribs and don't share the do- the ribs with the dogs. That's right, because I all have a dog. Oh. What the... <laughs> but thank you. I don't quite know what you mean, but thank you. Someone bought a coffee. I asked someone, could women storm Omaha Beach like the men did on June 6th, 1944? They said, absolutely. All I said, <laughs> had to say was, amazing. <laughs> People who think men and women are equal are making a big mistake. And the only way they can storm... Oh, what's up there? Look. Whoa. What's going on? He's just showing me. Uh, where's the spit thing? Oh. I'm not sure. Maybe he's having fun. Are you playing around? No. No, he lost. Oh, that's okay. Um, the only way they could storm o- Omaha Beach is they got to be dancing like those police women in New York. Fat and dancing and doing the booty dance. Joel Friday TV covered that, too. I know, yesterday. Yeah. Did you cover that? We had that coming up. Ah. Amazing. Thank you. Indeed. Over on... Uh, Rumble, a rumble rant from Waldo39. You got to know how to rumble. Joseph here. Good morning, Jesse and crew. Your brother from another mother (laughs) will be in NLR Arkansas on Tuesday night. Another speaker guy? Uh, Kansas. And I I will be attending We Who Wrestle With God. Thoughts? I don't know what to promote. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. (laughs) <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Urinal Chills. I can't promote that because I have no idea. Indeed. Uh, Urinal Chills says... Okay. <laughs> it's Bible Thumper in, Thursday. That's speaking in tongue? Yeah. What the... I may be mispronouncing some of the words that he wrote, or non-words. Thank you. Oh, that's it. That's Jesse Lee Peterson on Rumble, guys. Thank you for the support. Oh, amazing. Thank you. C on C bought a coffee looking sharp as usual, Jesse. Thank you, C on C. Indeed. That's a nice uh, boss shirt. Who is the boss? Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Greenwall bought a coffee. I had never heard of that clip of Trump before, the one you played toward the beginning of the show. Yeah. Now that I, now that's what I call telling the truth in love. Any yeah. chance you could play it again? Yeah, let me find it. Play Hassan, it again, Sam. It's uh, C22 1B. Can you play that? Okay, let's hear it. Am I wrong? Start to realize that Democrats only care about our, my, my, my people's vote. They really don't care about our people. Even if they have the same skin color. 
Obama was trash. <laughs> Donald Trump is the greatest president of my lifetime. He was on. He, st he stood on that stage and said, "What do you got to lose?" Look how much African American communities have suffered under Democratic control. To those, I say the following: What do you have? To lose. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? You're living in poverty. Your schools are no good. You have no jobs. 58% of your youth is unemployed. What the hell do you have to lose? I'm full on MAGA. I'm full on conservative. And there's more like me. Believe me. Amazing. That's deep. Thank you. And thank you, guys. That's all for now. Amazing. Thank you all. Appreciate it. 888-7753-773. That was an interesting show with you yesterday. You had a guest on. Yeah? You thought so? Uh, podcast folks to catch the hate report from yesterday. And Joel Friday yesterday dealt with the p dancing police. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how they were dancing? He's dancing right now. <laughs> For those listening on audio podcast, he's doing interpretive dancing. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the police in New York were dancing, the females. All the female police. And they were all fat. Shout out to the fat people. Just imagine if that police stopped you on the street and talk about hold up your hands. Hands up. <laughs> like, I just saw you a little slutty step dancing in a video. <laughs> Put your hands up. <laughs> Let me take a break. When I come back, folks, two more hours ago, I'm coming straight to your calls. Hake is coming in with the hate news right now. The hate news, not the fake news. And I'll be back in a moment. Bible Thumper Thursday. Two more hours ago. Back in a moment. Now, I totally disagree with the way things are going, but you can't be angry because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to control you. They do things to make you mad so they can control you. It's like being married. And the wife would do things to make you mad or she would do things to make you feel good. And men do that to women too when they want something from the woman, especially sex. They'll make her feel good or they'll make her angry. And the woman's gonna have to say, you don't wanna be angry. You wanna speak up, you wanna disagree with what's going on, it's wrong, but do not be angry. Then you won't have fear, you won't have doubt, you won't have worries, you'll be able to see, but you gotta stay away from anger. That's why you must forgive your mothers and your fathers so that you can overcome the spirit of anger. It's a spirit and it's wicked. Nothing good in anger because it has no love, folks. You need love to defeat evil. And love is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's from God. It's his nature. Whole lot of mess going on in the world. Am I right, guys? Pardon me while I look at my phone. I'm not I'm not trying to be rude. I just have to keep time. Uh, this is the end of our two one of the Jesse Lee Peterson show. You can tell Hake is paying attention. Uh, it's Thursday, Bible Thumper Thursday. February 22nd, A.D., 2024. Their uh, lines are full, guys. JLP will be right back to your calls. Be patient. Hang tight. But first, fake news, not fake news. Embryo lives matter, says Alabama. Degenerates using IVF because they uh, squandered their youth all too common. Shout out to those who squandered their youth. It's not the end of the world or your life. Biden's toying with closing the border because Trump was right. This is all from the far-left females at the Skim and Commie Nonsense Network, as usual. Don't be killing embryos, liberals. Con uh, the far-left female run outlet, the Skim reports, after Alabama's top court ruled frozen embryos are children. Many questions about the future of IVF remain. Last week, the Alabama Supreme Court, the, ba the best uh, state in the union, perhaps, ruled that fertilized Unimplanted embryos, meaning they're not put into a woman for uh, pregnancy, created via in vitro fertilization, IVF, are children under state law. 
referring to the type of facility where embryos are stored as a cryogenic nursery. The first-of-its-kind decision stemmed from a wrongful death lawsuit filed by three couples whose embryos were accidentally destroyed. The ruling did, doesn't make IVF illegal, but there are rising concerns about its impact on the so-called fertility treatment. Uh, couples, oh, IVF involves extracting multiple eggs from a woman and fertilizing them with sperm, sorry kids, ladies, in a lab. An IVF cycle produces usually more than one embryo. According to the scared woman-led unchristian CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about 4 million babies are born each year in the United States. They are conceived via IVF. So there were 417 live births via IVF and other related procedures in Alabama in 2021. A single IVF cycle can cost between $15,000 and $30,000. Uh, the ones that aren't immediately implanted into a patient's uterus <laughs> to create a pregnancy could usually get frozen for possible future use. The HHS, not Christians, uh, Health and Human Services, which should probably be disbanded, United States government, uh, estimated there were at least 600,000 frozen embryos stored in the United States in 2020. Embryos can be frozen for a decade or more. Wow, it's wild. It's not uncommon for them to be discarded if there is a genetic abnorm abnormality, also known as, uh, as eugenics, or patients decide not to use them. Under the ruling, those who destroy embryos could be held liable for wrongful death since the embryos are legally considered children now. It's not clear if those who undergo IVF will have to store their embryos indefinitely, and if so, where and at what cost. It's also unclear who bears responsibility, clinics or patients. Yesterday, the University of Alabama at Birmingham Health System confirmed they've paused all IVF treatments. Uh, they're evaluating the court's decision. Many in the field say fertility clinics could close in Alabama. Its doctors worry about risking civil or criminal charges. Others say the ruling could further increase the cost of IVF and serve as a framework for other states to follow Alabama. The anti-abortion group Live Action Pro-Lifers, they say an embryo deserves and is guaranteed legal protection. So the Supreme Court, you know, they overruled that disgraceful, lame 70s decision, Roe v. Wade, and many so-called abortion rights, quote-unquote, no such thing. Advocates worry that IVF could be restricted next, as if they care about lives. They don't care. Now the ruling in Alabama is already changing access to the fertility treatment for people, perhaps mostly when, women, again, who squandered their youth, which is encouraged by the liberals, I'll have you know, who want to have children and view IVF as their best option in, in vitro fertilization. Invasion is so bad that Biden may not be able to ignore it. I'll have to tell you about that in the next hour because JLP is coming right up next for Bible Thumper Thursday. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show today. You can get involved by calling 888 7753 888 77 Jesse J E S S E. 
Jesse, my biblical question for this week, what's trapping you? What's trapping you? Isn't that an amazing question? What's trapping you? You don't have to be trapped. But what is joining it to you? We have every way that you can watch and support the show. Listen on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're out and about or you're at home making breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or you whatever, and you just can't watch the show live, you, have, you know that you can podcast. But no matter what you're doing, you still can be listening to the show. No matter what. You could be listening to the show on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500. 641-793-1500. Follow us on Cozy. Cozy.tv slash JLP where Christ is King. Cozy.tv. And Rumble. You got to know how to rumble.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Like, follow, ring the bell, and blah, blah, blah. Subscribe. To donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com. Buymeacoffee.com slash Jesse Lee, JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk or Bond JLP Cash App. Bon JLP Cash App. So it is Thursday. It's the second hour of Thursday already. It is Bible Bumper Thursday. Oh God! Oh God! Are you ready? Are you ready? I don't see. <laughs> Hallelujah! All for the thrill of it. All for the thrill. I want, I want to encourage you guys to, and ladies to do yourself a favor. Watch how people, your family members, no matter who it is, when someone is trying to hurt you, embarrass you, or make themselves look good or whatever, right? They hate you. Be quiet and stand and watch the thrill in them. Watch the thrill, the evil thrill they're getting from feeling good from it or feeling angry about it. Watch the thrill. It's going to blow your mind. Watch. It'll blow your mind. Let me go to Ronnie out of Ohio. Uh, Ronnie, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Uncle Jesse, how you doing today? All this well, sir. How are you? Would I be wrong if I said I'm good? He, absolutely. And why is that? Because ain't nothing good about you. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no, hey, I, ain't I, no good in you. I thought you was going to help me uh, segue into the uh, the Bible verse I wanted to touch on. And what's that? Uh uh, in chapter 10 of Mark, uh, that guy, the rich guy, uh, ran up on Jesus and, um, he said, good teacher. And, uh, and that's when Jesus responded and said, why do you call me good? Uh, nobody is good except God. Deep. Nobody is uh, good except God. That's amazing. Yeah. So for that guy to call Jesus good teacher and then him to correct him and say, Nobody is good except God. Uh, I feel like if, if Jesus was God, he would have said, yeah, I am good. That, that is deep, man. You're absolutely right. That's for those people who believe, the Bible thumpers who believe that Jesus is God. And you're right about that. He wouldn't have said that nobody is good except God. He would have like, yeah, you're right. I am good. Yeah, that was yeah, that was the, uh, the interpretation that I got from that uh, interaction uh, with that guy that he ended up telling that if he wanted him to be perfect, go sell your possession. Um, so, yeah, that, that's chapter 10 of Mark. I, I'm sure you'll have some people calling in trying to tell you that uh, Jesus is God. So I wonder uh, yeah, how I wanted... will they justify that now? Because that's a very, very good scripture and good point to show 
that Jesus was making clear that he wasn't God, if anything. Yep. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah, that's uh, that's Mark chapter 10. Um, and then real quick, uh, in John chapter 10, um, when they accused Jesus of blasphemy, he, uh, he retorted to them and said, why do you accuse me of blasphemy for saying that I am God's son? <laughs> Mark 10, so, 18. Uh, yep, yeah, Mark, Mark chapter 10 and then John chapter 10. Uh, that was Jesus saying that no man is good except God and then saying that it's not blasphemy if I call myself God's son because he said that, you know, that's, that's what we all are. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that the intellectual Bible thumpers, it's unfortunate, but I do understand it, that they have believed a lie from the preachers that, Jesus is God, and because they have believed into that lie, I or you or no one, we can give them as many scriptures as possible to show them that he was not God. They're not going to believe it until they're ready to see it because they have believed in the intellect, and the intellect hate God, and it will not allow them to see the truth until they want to see it, and then God will cause them to see it. They're just not going to see it right now. Yeah, and things happen on their uh, their own time. Some, some who are first will be last, and those who are last will be first. So yeah. hopefully they uh they come around before it's too late. Amazing, a my, amazing point, Ronnie. Thank you, man. Absolutely. Have a have a good rest of your week, and uh, y'all take it easy. You too, buddy. Amazing. You, Josh, that's there's a line open eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three. Josh, out of Georgia, Georgia, oh my my, Josh, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, what's going on, Uncle Jeffrey? All this well, Josh. Thanks for calling. No problem, man. I was calling for the biblical question. What? What's trapping you? What's trapping uh, I, you? Yeah. I would say there's nothing trapping me, even though it's feels like there is. And what do you mean by it feels like there is? It, it, it feels like um, that, um, I'm, I'm, I don't have control over my, well, yeah, I don't have control over myself and um, there's a demon in me controlling me and putting thoughts in my head, but it seemed like, you know, there's another, there's something else in me that's fighting that demon. Like, I'm like I'm divided. Like, I'm, there's conflict in, going on in me, and I'm not in control of any of it, and I'm just, um, I, but I, it's, it's an illusion that I'm trapped. The, the demon in me is, is what's trapped, and it, it feels like that's me, but it's not. Amazing. I want to respond. I want to ask something or ask you a question about it, but I got to wait. That's interesting. Yep. Uh, uh, I appreciate that, Josh. Thank you. No problem at all, man. Thank you, buddy. All right, man. Thank Bye. You. 888-7753-773. First time I call James out of Missouri. James, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. Hey, James. I uh been listening to your show for a uh, few months now and I'm interested in uh whether you believe in the virgin birth miracles uh supernatural happenings If I believe in the virgin birth miracle, what does that, what does that mean? Uh, Jesus was supposedly did not have a biological father. She was, Mary was uh, impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Oh. Do you so, believe that? Yes. Absolutely. And Do you believe it? 
I don't know. I'm struggling with that. And why are you struggling with it? How are you struggling with it? Because I've never experienced a supernatural thing. You know, we have to go by science. Well, I see. Uh, and so you're struggling trying to believe it or not to believe it? Both. Both? What, don't struggle with it at all. It's enough to just leave it blank. I don't know. And don't, don't try to, to believe it, and don't try not to believe it. And if you don't put any effort into believing, it will be revealed to you. Then you would know for yourself. So don't struggle either way. It's, it's okay to leave it blank so the Spirit of the Father can reveal it to you. Yeah. Are you able to just leave it oh. as, I don't know if that's true or not? Well, I, I was raised Catholic, and um, I know the Bible because it was forced on me all my life. Well, forgive them for that. They should not have done that to you. That's why they have you struggling right now. So forgive them. They know not what they do. And then just have a I don't know attitude. And I'm telling you, you will come to know. It will be revealed to you. Yeah, that's that's worked for me in the past. Absolutely. So, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um are you doing the silent prayer, James? I feel like I silently pray all the time. Are you doing the one where you just sit quietly and observe? Yeah. Oh, okay, stay with that. And don't believe any thoughts and emotions. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything except for practical thoughts. Look both ways before walking across the road. But all those thoughts in your head about other things, let them pass. So just sit quietly, watch the thoughts, the feelings, and, and go through it, and you'll know the truth. The truth is on the other side of hell. The truth. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I want to know the truth, and uh, nobody well, knows. Because it's inside of you. So are you doing my silent prayer? You know about my silent prayer? I have not uh, checked out what well, check I that, understand. Check it out. Continue to do what you're doing, but do the one I, I have out there too, rebuildingtheman.com slash prayer, and give that a try. Let me know what you think. Okay. Rebuildingtheman.com slash prayer. Yeah, I do understand. I read books, you know, about, you know, meditation and all that stuff. You don't want to meditate. You want to observate. All you want to do is become the watcher. You just want to watch and let life happen. Yeah, that's what I've been doing most of my life, but it seems to fail. No, well, do give my silent prayer a really good chance and let me know. Okay. All right? Yeah, thanks, Jesse. All right, thank you, James. You're welcome. Bye now. Amazing. 888-775-3773. 888-775-3773. Jesse. Larry from Indiana. Larry, welcome. Welcome to the show. Hey, Jesse, can you hear me? <clears throat> Loud and clear, uh, Larry. All right, so I know you may not remember, but, you know, I had to forgive my mom and Swipe D down in Texas. Are you on a speakerphone, Larry? Yeah, give me one second. All right. How about now? Better. Go ahead. Yeah, I forgave my mom down in Texas, X, Y, Z. She didn't want me to leave the house, and I'm 18 already. She ripped my plates off, got ready for school. She did XYZ what? I, she ripped your plate. Oh, yeah. She ripped yeah, the plates off, off your car. 
Yeah, ripped the plates off the metal plates that were screwed <laughs> in pretty tight. Uh, crazy. But I drove to Indiana, and um, ever since, you know, <clears throat> since that, like a month later, she tried to apologize, and we got we got back a little cordial. We got back a little cordial, but um, after that, I don't know what happened. One day she had to text me. She had called me, and then I had texted her, and I had said, what did you want? What do you want? And she took it personal, so she got all upset about it. And long story short, it got to her threatening me. She's going to have people do this to me and X, Y, Z. So I have not talked to her in, like, a couple of months. Um, <clears throat> people in my family tell me, you know, you should talk to her. Da, 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 da. You know, you never know what might happen. She might die, X, Y, Z. And honestly, if my mom was to die today, I don't. Hello? What the? Hey, Larry? Larry? Did we lose Larry? Hold on, Larry. I'm going to let Sean check it out. Let me go to Vicky out of uh, Texas. Vicky, I'm going to let uh, Sean check out. I don't know if Larry had a problem with his phone or what. Vicky, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good morning, bro. How are you doing today? All is well, Vicky. <laughs> Great. I want to discuss something with you. Um, I told my husband yesterday that I've noticed, you know, keeping your eye on yourself, right? Um, and doing the silent prayer, I've noticed that, you know, God's the only one that's changing me because I'm not doing anything. I'm just living, right? So, but it, I've noticed that I went from many years, like maybe 50 plus years of hooping and hollering and changing churches and pastors to, you know, just not depending on the Bible or anyone but God. And doing the silent prayer, it, I went from still doing a little hooping and hollering, you know, every other day to not doing that at all and just focusing on the silent prayer. And even in the silent prayer, you know, I was watching everything and noticing um a lot and, you know, catching the thoughts and um, seeing that I was possessed and accepting it, but knowing that God was taking it from me. And w even in prayer, I would, I would still try to take control by asking, and I could hear my voice, like, speaking to God and nothing was working. But now I've grown because he's brought me to a different level of in the silent prayer. Um, it's like I don't hear my voice anymore. It's like this connection, like in my gut and my heart. Like it's this connection that he, are, he knows, you know, he knows what, my needs are because all of our needs are all you know taken care of but it's like when I need a favor from him every now and then it's like I would before I could hear myself asking but now it's just like I'm just still and there's just peace and I just I just have this connection in my gut and my heart that's like in one with him right and it's like where did my voice go? <laughs> like, I don't hear myself asking or, you know, for a favor or anything anymore. Like, it's not my voice. It's just my spirit, I guess, connecting with him. Oh, amazing. Well, stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. No matter what yeah. situation comes. No matter the tricks the devil try to play on your mind inside of you or use others right. to try to go after you, you just stay with it. it. 
you haven't seen anything yet, Vicki. Amazing. It is amazing. And uh, I just thank you, Jesse, for everything. Everything. You're welcome. Stay with I it. I'm telling you, stay with it. I appreciate you, Vicki. I know. Thank I'm you. all in. <laughs> right on. You got to be all in. 99 all in, and a half won't do. You got to do 100. I, when I go through hell, and I have been through hell with my family and the world, and it's like I'm being separated from the world, and I see it. Because it's not my eyes that are seeing, it's God's and my ears. He's hearing everything. He can hear everything because he's in me. And, you know, it's it's amazing. Like, I'm becoming his daughter, and I can see, and other people can see such a change. And it's like, wow, when you can't even hear your own voice in prayer anymore. Amazing. It's crazy. So thank you, brother. I do you're, love you. <laughs> I love you as well. Thank you, uh, Vicki. I appreciate you. You're welcome. All right. Take now. care, Jesse. Have a blessed you day. You too. Amazing. Stay with us. Stay with us. Stay with us. CC, is it CC? A first time caller <laughs> out of South Carolina. CC, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Uh, thank you. Um, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm calling because I wanted to get an idea of, I guess, what your objective is. Like, I've watched a lot of your content over the years, uh-huh. and I just wanted to hear from the horse's mouth. What my, what my objection, adje- adje- what is it, would you ask? Yes, sir. Yeah, your objective as far as, um, I guess, the goal oh, I that see. you have in mind um, with, I guess, how your message is impacting just the community or just, just overall. Uh, um, I have zero objection, zero goal with it. Okay, because I know you stated, I know that you are, uh, I believe you're a pastor or a minister, right? I have zero goal. Oh, okay, got it. Right. But yeah, I mean, as a man of God, I mean, like, that wouldn't be part of the goal. Because I mean, you speak on politics, you also speak on the Bible. I am right. not a man of God. What is a man of God? A man who basically has got his head in his life and understands order. And why do you call that a man of God? <clears throat> well, I mean, what would you rather call it? Just Jesse. Yeah, I don't want to get into semantics, so we don't have to call it that. But a man no, who... No, my a, name I is Jesse. Man... Can you call me Jesse? Sure, no problem. Yeah, yeah, whatever you... Jesse is perfect. Yes, sir. But yeah, yeah, like I said, I just hear a lot and, you know, I just don't really know what you stand for. Nothing. Um, Okay. All right. So when you open the line to, like like I said, you speak on politics, there's a lot of um, that you have to say regarding um, the negative side of things with the black community. Um. You know, I just I understand your views on women. So, I guess I mean there has to be objective an objective if you have followers because Why? they're following you where we go. Why? Yes, sir. Why do they have Why? to be? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you have followers, and I'm sure there's people that may send money up. Uh, people that trust your guidance, your judgment, your sense of direction, um, like with your thought process. But so, why does I mean, there have to be a goal or objection or anything? I mean, because I mean, I mean that that just comes with the territory of order. What? Uh, how's that? There's no order when you have an objection. You're out of order. Oh, so, so, so you have. Whenever no you have so, a goal, you're out of order. There's no order in having a goal. Okay, got it, got it, got and it. And there's right, no so, order in having an ob- objection or whatever you call it. All right, so I guess so. Your show is more of like just an open mic. I guess you just kind of project what's on your mind from day to day. No. But you don't really, you have, there's no foresight in what you're saying. That's what you're telling me. No, I'm just saying I have none of those things that you you named. Got it. So, yeah, if you don't have an objective and if you, you, you know, there's, you, with, with everything you just said, I guess, why is there um, so much emphasis placed on the negative with the black community? Like what, for and example? Granted, these issues are global. These things come with the territory of human nature. Like what, for example? one blood, God made all nations. I'm okay? sorry? So, What'd yes, you sir. say? What'd you say? Uh, I, and I just quoted a scripture from one blood, God made all nations. 
Okay, so in this, I noticed that your show, your podcast, it seems to emphasize a lot of the downfalls of the black community, um, or just black in general, black this, black that. So it's like, I guess, what is the objective there? I mean, what what is positive about the black community? <laughs> what is positive about the black community? Yeah. Are you well, black? You are you before, black, CC? There is no black community. Are so you black, blood, CC? God made all nations. So you seem to chime in or hone in on, I guess, should we say, people of African descent? CC, are you black? And, and if you know, we can't be boxed in because CC. at the end of the day, hey. the Holy Spirit. Hey. Spirit, see, see. Whether the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit will, don't leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the Holy Spirit won't Holy in Spirit pray. don't okay. leave me. Holy Spirit don't leave me. This got me on my way. Exactly. See, see, exactly, what's positive? Right? So what's the Holy positive? Spirit will not dwell in an unclean spirit. I know. Uh, God, religion, and I'm not ashamed <laughs> because the Holy <laughs> Ghost is my witness. Oh, my goodness. And the angels done changed my name. CC, what's okay. positive about the black community? What is positive about the black community? Right. Um, I won't. Go there. Um, you haven't. Responded you won't go to where. You, you know, I mean, no, you won't I go to the black community. The black I don't blame you. We're all individuals. Just like I, just like I can't say what's positive about the black community or the Asian community. Like everybody is an individual reflection of their personal walk with God. And again, part, you know, like what do you, know, what do you mean you by that? Everybody is individual of a reflection of a walk with God. What do you mean by that? Right, because the Holy Spirit will not dwell in an unclean place. What makes your temple clean is your judgment call. Okay, so a lot What's a judgment in the call? Mind, and from what you've projected, what's on a judgment show, call? It doesn't really seem like you're really coming from a stable space or a clean place. CC, speak against anyone. CC, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Are you black? I am. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. what's good about you? about me a lot of things are good about me like what i i don't i'm not getting into any i'm not gonna get into that you can't name one thing that's good about I you mean, as the man you're the leader so you can lead by answering your, the initial question you have bypassed everything C -C, that i stated what's so I would, good about you i will you? answer that question when you answer mine if C -C. you don't feel comfortable answering that question i just want you to know that cc you can't find there. anything good about yourself Jesse, 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 listen. No, no, I just, I operate in balance, and it would be You operate unbalanced? Because, yes, I'm not answering your question. You say you are unbalanced? I am balanced. And you, because why I'm are balanced, you unbalanced? I never said that. Hold on, Cece. Hold on. Let me take a quick break. Do not hang up, Cece. I'll be back in a moment. 888 Jesse. We have a counseling service, and I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy, they're miserable, they have rough lives, they're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand, I know why, and I do understand it because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that, out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven.
Okay, folks, welcome back. The Hake Report is coming up at 9 a.m. And he had a guest yesterday. I highly recommend you podcast. The Hake, H-A-K-E Report dot com. From 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. The guy with the good hair, and he's on fire. And after the Hake Report, uh, Joel Friday TV, he black. And Joel dealt with the dancing police in New York yesterday. Podcast that. They had these fat police women dancing. I'm like, what the? Go to the academy and lift some weight, weights and run. Police ain't supposed to be fat and dancing. But anyway, Joel Friday TV at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Better known as Arkansas, not Arkansas, but Arkansas. And after Joel Friday TV, the American Anka Baby. And he's on fire. Energy given to him by God. Amazing. At 12 noon Pacific time. I want to encourage you to follow at JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram. JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram for clips from all the network hosts. We're building a 24-hour all-talk network by men of all races or whatever they want to talk about. Isn't that amazing? And thank you all for happening, making it happen. All right. Let me go quickly back to Cece. And Cece, you're going to tell me something good about her. Cece, tell me something good about you. You say you're good. You don't get to ask questions if you can't answer questions. I do My get to ask questions. Show My show, not your and mama. Hey, Cece, you might not realize it's my show. I do get the ask the question. That, and I respect that. But well, then totally if you respect, respect so it, answer the question, it. woman. <laughs> no need to be, uh, no need to get upset. Not upset, woman. Answer the question. You sound like it. Whatever. What's good about you, <laughs> Cece? Upset. A lot of things are good about, about me. Like um, what? But, like yeah. what? Name one thing. I don't know, sir. No, 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 no. See, see, see this show. You can't I name mean, one thing that's good no, about no, you? No, because you represent C. yourself C. as a preacher. Okay? C. C. Um, that is what drew C. me here. C. C. Okay? So I think that it's only fair to C. say C. that you're playing a dangerous game in the spirit room by... I put C. C. on hold because the woman is not obeying the man right now. What the... CC, you're supposed to be a good woman. You know the order. You got to obey the man. Okay, I'm going to try one more time. I put on hold. So I'm going to try one more time with uh Community in with you. CC, okay. I had you on okay. hold. Okay. CC. Yeah, like I said, it's okay. I put it back on hold. This is a black female. See why the kid's so crazy? She won't listen to the man. Eve would not listen because Eve had taken on the nature of the serpent. Now she can't listen to the man. I think she's still talking, but let me try one more time. Okay. CC. Yes, sir. I had you on hold so nobody knew it hurt. It's crazy when they mess with black. I, I got on hold again. <laughs> CC, take a drink. And calm down. According to VDare.com, why CC is coming down. Kansas City, Missouri is 55% white and 30% black. The, 23, the 2023 homicide report revealed that 78% of known homicide suspects in Kansas City in Kansas City in 2023 were black. What the? 
or meh. CC? Am I on hold or am I muted? What's going you, on? You were on hold the whole time. Okay. So you take a breath. Oh, I have a question. I have a okay. question for you. Yeah, yeah, but again. CC, I'm going to try yes, one more time and then I'm going to hang up on you since you won't, you won't uh -oh. act like you got some sense. Uh oh. CC, tell me one good thing about you. Uh oh. Am I still muted? Hello? Tell me one good thing about you. You're playing a dangerous game in the spirit realm. I let her go. That's what's raising black children. And you wonder why they're out of control. VDare.com, Kansas City, Missouri, is 55% white and 30% black. In 2023, Homicide Report revealed that 78% of known homicide suspects in Kansas City in 2023 were black. What a nasty black female CC is. She called my show and tried to rule. Give her a feather. She's a Cherokee. Let me go back to, I think, Larry out of Indiana. His phone. Larry, your phone dropped or something. You're back on the air. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, sir. CC is pure comedy. <laughs> <laughs> CC, remind me of your mama. Oh, is he remind me of my mom for sure, man? Just <laughs> answer the question. <laughs> but no, man, look, so I, I haven't talked to my mom in a really long time, and I keep getting these thoughts, which I know are lies, that, you know, you hate her. You don't want to talk to her, X, Y, Z. And her birthday's coming up, and, you know, like, if I if she, if she we cross paths directly, I may say happy birthday, but I don't talk to her at all. And when I, when I talk to people about it, they say, like, you know, like, dang, like, you shouldn't hate your mom, X, Y, Z. And I say, I, I don't hate her. I just don't talk to her. I don't have no reason to talk to her. I don't want to talk to her. And it's just it's just like certain things. Like, if my mom was to die today, I, I probably wouldn't go to her funeral. And it's just like, and if I never, ever, ever talk to her again, like a, a day in my life, is there anything wrong with that at all? Not at all. The only thing is don't be angry at her. She She's living in her hell. She love her hell. She's trying to impose her hell on you. You have a right to protect yourself from her he her hell by staying away from her, but just don't be angry. She can't help herself. Yeah, that's why I, I definitely understand that. I, I, 100% I'm not angry, but you know how the devil, he tries to give you the thoughts, and then he tries to give you these feelings that make you think that those thoughts are real, but I'm just like, I don't hate her. You know, it's just I don't want to be around her. I don't care to talk to her. Right. I don't care to see her or anything like that. And you're right. All thoughts are all lies all the time. And the thoughts are straight out of hell. And, and the, the, um, the, the spirits of evil, which is hell, do not want you to go free. And so they're going to send people after you, your own family members, other people. Oh, you should call your mama. What happens if she dies? What happens if she dies? She's dead. Ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Just see, this woman, according to what you said about her, you tried to leave home. She tried to keep you there, according to what you said. She pulled a license plate off your car. She did everything she can. What kind of mama is that that's going to control her son, try to control her son? And all I said was, all I said was, hey, look, I forgive you. I'm sorry for resenting you, but I'm 18 years old. The decisions that you are trying to make for me, you can't make them because they're not your decisions to make. I'm going to make my own decisions. And I'm going to move out whether you like it or not. And me personally, I thought, and I shouldn't have thought, but I thought she was going to, hey, oh, okay, that's nice. And then you can, you're taking a load off of my back because she's already taking care of two other, um, a young teen and a, and a teenager. So I'm just like, you know, that would be, she probably would be, a, this man went outside, she took my wallet, she took $400 out of my wallet. I couldn't get the money back because when the police got there, they said it was a civil disagreement. So they couldn't do anything about the money. So, she knew I was going to drive to Indiana. She took the money, left me broke. Then she ripped my plates off of my car. <laughs> and then she, and then as I'm leaving, she turns my phone. Like Not even after I left the house five minutes, she turned my phone off. So I'm, I'm, I'm in Texas with no service. I don't know if you've been to Texas, but Texas is really big. Yeah. I'm trying to find a phone store so I can turn my phone on and have internet service. And I'm just driving around. She took my car. She's, she's taking money. I'm like, bro. 
honestly, are you honestly serious? And after that, <laughs> one thing she told me, she said, she said, you better not never struggle because if you ever struggle, you cannot never call me. Why? I, said, okay, I will never, I will never call right. you. Right. I you? won't call you. And I got, I had family members. They tell me like, you know, you should talk to her, you know, because my mom, she's, she's pretty financially stable. So they, you know, she could teach you things. She could show you things. And me personally, she probably could, but I don't want that because at the end of the day, she cannot show me, she can't lead me in the right direction. And being financially stable and being led in the right direction is being led in the right direction is way more important to me than being financially absolutely than man. being wealthy. Absolutely. And this woman fighting to keep you at home like you were her husband. What the? Uh, what the? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, baby, 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 please don't leave me. <laughs> baby, baby, baby. Oh, no, man. What a mess. Yeah, what a mess. No, nah, you don't let, don't believe any thoughts about this situation. Let all thoughts pass. Stay with your silent prayer. Just don't be angry at her. Let her live in her hell. And if these people call you to try to, oh, call your mama, that's hell too. You, 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 you'll you be guided by the light. You'll see what to do. Stay with that. Yes, sir. And def- definitely with starting the silent prayer. And one thing I've noticed is, you know, when you really stay in the present, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Yeah. It's so amazing when you are living just second by second. It's just amazing because you never know what will happen next. I mean, I, I I stop wanting. I don't want for nothing. Right on. I, after I stop wanting, I mean, it's just like he just gives me. He just gives me. Cause I, I thought I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a millionaire. That's not what I actually wanted. Yeah. And after I stopped wanting, he started placing these things. So now I stopped wanting for this job. I stopped wanting to do. Uh, I stopped wanting to make this business thing work, and it just wasn't working. And then. Just recently, an opportunity came across in a, a, a apprenticeship, and it's a hard working job. You know, it's a hard working job, and I and I, I I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm definitely gonna do it. Right on. And it's and it's it's just been amazing, man. You know, uh, 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 of all things you said, amazing things. The one you said that I want to encourage you to stay present. You want to stay present, stay present, and as you're present, you're a whole. You're one. You're not divided, but if you go into thinking about the past or thinking about the future or thinking about mama or thinking about what somebody said about mama, you just stay present. Practice staying present. That's where God is and that's where whole life is. And you cannot, you will not, ain't not, not not, never go wrong. No such thing as going wrong if you stay present. No matter what situation happens, it has nothing to do yes, with you. Sir. You'll be fine. Yes, sir. Amazing, Larry. No. Amazing, man. <laughs> Just, hey, how old are you now? I'm 18 still. Wow. Well, just stay present. And, and again, don't be angry at her. She's living in her hell. And she has a right to stay in her hell. Leave her there. Wish her well. But even God leave everyone in their hell until they're ready to come out. Yeah. I don't know when the last time you've been to Indiana, though, but, man, I mean, the jobs, I mean, every store you go into, and I kid you not, every store, every fast food, every, and it's starting to, and it's starting to become this way with the retail, all you have is foreigners. Eight times out of ten, which is really bad, they don't even speak English. They only speak English. <laughs> Yesterday I went into a Five Guys, right? And they usually they have these peanuts sitting out there. And every time I go in there, I'll go get some peanuts so I don't have to spend my money on food. And I went in there this this the other day, and I haven't been in there for a couple of weeks. And I say, when I say all you see are Hispanic, Spanish, whatever you want to call it, females. I'm in there taking, they're taking forever. So I go and get some peanuts, and I always get peanuts, and they never say anything. And it's usually white men and black men in there. They never say anything. So I go over there, and I get the peanuts, and this this Mexican female, she just comes out of the door, and she's just watching me. I'm getting <laughs> my peanuts. And she she said, hey, I, said, well, I don't even know what she said because she wasn't even speaking English. She said, no, 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 no peanuts outside. And I said, what? <laughs> so I started filling my bag up while she, she said, no, you can't take that. I'm like, lady, what are you talking about? So I just got my peanuts and I walked out. She's like, no, no, can't, you can't. And I just walked, I just walked past her. 
Well, don't be. I can't have my peanuts, man. Even with that situation, don't be angry because. Oh, 100%. She, she, she know not what she's doing. Yeah. Amazing. And one, one last thing. One last thing. All right. My dad once told me that real men don't drink out of straws. Is that true? Real men don't drink out of straws? Yes. <laughs> I know. I heard that. <laughs> I heard. Uh, I heard Jesse Waters saying that. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I drink out of straws all the time. You know, you drink milkshake from a straw. I know, uh, babe. How are you supposed to? How are you supposed to drink a milkshake? Man, take the top off. How are you supposed to drink a protein drink? Take the top off, man. So you don't drink out of straws? No, sir. Really? No, not at all. If it has whipped cream on the top, <laughs> I'll take the top off and then I'll throw the whipped cream out. Really? Yeah. No what the? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, gonna have, I, I, I'm not going to rule that out. I'm going to wait and see. Thank you for that. All right. Thank you. Have a good day, Jesse. Good, th- good to hear from you, Larry. Call me again, man. Yes. And stay yes, on this on that strain and narrow no matter what, all right? Yes, sir. All right, buddy. Amazing. 888-7753-773. Barbara is from Michigan. Barbara, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Well, hello, Jesse. How you doing all, today? All is well. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. All is well. That's awesome. Um, I, I always thought the Bible said you're supposed to be respectful. To your parents? No, it doesn't say that. Barbara, what happened to Barbara's phone? Oh, her phone dropped. Barbara, call me back. 888-7753-773. Let me go to Daryl out of Illinois. Daryl, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, what's going on, Jesse? How you doing? All is well, sir. Hey, so, um, I, w- I wanted to respond to uh, what the girl CC, um, the girl CC. Um, so, me personally, CC didn't I, say anything. Yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> the, um, the thing is, the reason why we focus on the uh, the black community is because um, they're being judged in real time. You can see yeah. that the that the community is in shambles because. They're suffering the wrath of God's judgment. They turned their back on God. Yeah. And that's why y'all are women in positions of power. It says that it's biblical. It says when women are, when women rule over you, that's a sign of, of uh, God's judgment. So when you see that there's something wrong with that, you should be able to point at that and say, hey, don't be like that. They can come out of that, but they're choosing not to because they're reprobates. <clears throat> so that's... that's um, that and the reason I called Daryl, let me just say that is an amazing point, man. You're absolutely, absolutely, absolutely right. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, and I wanted to, the reason for calling was because um, I was talking to some Bible thumpers, and you know, I shouldn't even, I should never have engaged with them, but they were arguing that Jesus is God. And you know, I, I consider myself pretty humble, and I never, uh, Try to come off as if I know for a fact, you know what I'm talking about, because I'm always open to a healthy discussion. Right. But you know they were, it was kind of crazy how they was doing it because they was rattling off scriptures and it was a bunch of them, and it was rattling off scriptures and it was feeling like arguing with a Hebrew Israelite, but they wasn't black. They was um, <laughs> talking about how Jesus said, "I'm the Alpha and the Omega, I'm the first and the last." Um, I and my father, you know, the, the typical scriptures. And when I told them, like, yeah, you know, Jesus never said he was God. In fact, he said he's the son of God out of his own mouth. They, they told me that I was committing the blas- blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. I was like, wow, they really trying to scare people into believing what they believe. Yeah, And that, that's the same thing Cece did when she said, oh, you're doing bad things in the spirit world. I'm just like, <laughs> wow, the gaslighting is crazy. <laughs> They when they they are like the secular the Bible thumpers are like the secular world. If they can't make you believe what they want you to believe, they try to put fear in you in order to control you. Yeah, certainly. That's what that's all about. It's evil, but they don't realize it. They just don't know. Yeah, for sure. And uh, one last thing. Um, so I'm a, I'm um, 
a conservative, black conservative, uh, South Side of Chicago. And there's been a lot of talk about trying to flip Chicago red. And the, we went to go uh, meet a couple of the people that's t- trying to organize some stuff. And, you know, meeting them and seeing they the way they're going about trying to flip the city red, which they, I don't think is going to go red. These people don't want to go red. They only complaining about the immigrants, like the black people that, that vote for Trump or claim they're going to vote for Trump. They're only complaining about the immigrants. They haven't had a heart change. They haven't changed their way of thinking at all. They, they literally trying to go to the Republican Party to ask for more handouts. Yeah, they're, they're not they, even they, complaining they, about the black on black crime. They're right. not complaining about this. They are mad because the illegal aliens are getting their free stuff. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. And they think it. They think it's owed to them. Right. It's theirs. It's crazy. That so, you know, right on, man. Yeah. So we uh, we uh, my wife and I uh, told them like, yeah, you know, y'all y'all got it. If you mad about that, then you know, just leave. If you don't like it here, just leave. Like we going to Texas. We're nice. moving to Texas. We, we're not we're not gonna do that. And they they talk about oh redlining and stuff. It's like you acting like you can't leave. <laughs> I know. <Just> leave. <laughs> It's oh, the, the, the message They're crazy. just mad over the free stuff, man. That's all it's about. It's unfortunate, but if, if the illegal aliens were not there, even if the illegals were there, but not getting free stuff, and they were still getting the free stuff, you wouldn't even hear from the blacks in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's Amazing. true. Amazing call, Daryl. Thank you, man. I got to take a break. Thank you. Uh-huh, no problem. Oh, Amazing. See, there's some black people waking up. Amazing. What was that lady name that called me from Michigan? Barbara? Barbara. Barbara, call back. Barbara's having a phone problem. One more hour to go. Back in a moment. The hate news, not the fake news, but the hate news. I'll be back in a moment. Steve, thank you for calling and thanks for holding. How have you been helped by the show? I'm going to tell you this. I believe you might go down in history as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, black man that ever lived on planet Earth, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know anybody before you that's been that great. You know, freeing the slaves is one thing, but you've been freeing people of their mind, which matters. It should be, anyhow, to you more than anything else, because with the mind not being right, there ain't nothing else going to happen right anyway. If you can doubt every thought because you're not your thoughts, if you can doubt Every thought, knowing that you are not your thoughts, you don't create them, they are not from God, that they're from the deceiver, the great deceiver, Satan. If you can doubt every thought, you can be free, just like that. At an instant, bring every thought into captivity. It's so amazing. A whole whole lot of mess going on in the world. Biden's toying, as I said, with closing the border because Trump was right. Biden's dog has bit Secret Service at least 24 times, according to Comedy Nonsense Network. Is that true? Uh, Tiger Woods' 15-year-old son, Charlie Woods, wants to compete in the PGA Tour. Talented young man. Right on. United Airlines flying to Israel again. Maybe American Anchor Baby will fly you to Israel on United Airlines on Nick's stream tomorrow afternoon, Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 Eastern. Uh, join him. Moon mission landing happening again, quote unquote, today. Nice. This is the end of hour two of Bible Thumper Thursday, uh, February 22nd, A.D. 2024. The lines are full, guys. JLP will be right back to you. But first, Hake news, not fake news. After the Jesse Lee Peterson show, the Hake report. And after the Hake Report, Joel Friday TV. Joel Friday's last day of the week is Thursday. He's Monday through Thursday, 11 to 12 Pacific Time. And that is 1 to 2 Central, 2 to 3 Eastern. Make sure you join him, Joel Friday TV, on YouTube. And I believe he will be live on IG today, if I'm not mistaken. So follow him there. That's cool. Invasion. So bad Biden may not be able to ignore it? Oh, he'll ignore it the best he can. Comedy Nonsense Network CNN says the black on the inside, dark, evil. White House is considering an executive action 
that would effectively allow Biden to close the U.S.-Mexico border to migrants crossing illegally, a maneuver reminiscent of President Trump's crackdown, sure to invite fierce backlash among progressives, meaning degenerates. The sick White House is not commented. Unclear how the proclamation, if executed, would be different from what Trump enacted. In January, the U.S. Border Patrol more reported more than 124,000 encounters with illegals along the southern border. The ever-growing hordes are fueling tensions between federal and state officials. They're overwhelmed by already stretched resources, which is all part of the plan. Typical communist destructive ploy. Lamo Biden, alpha dog, President Biden's family dog, if you want to call it a family, commander, commander, bit U.S. Secret Service personnel at least 24 times. It's a bad owner, right? Beta owner, alpha dog, beta master, alpha dog. According to new documents obtained by Commie Nonsense Network CNN, the German shepherd joined the so-called family as a puppy in December 2021 and was removed from the black on the inside White House in October 2023. We're pulling for you, Commander. It's not your fault. (laughs) Tiger Woods' 15-year-old son Charlie aims to qualify for the PGA Tour event per CNN. He could... Charlie Woods could soon make his first PGA Tour start if he can advance at a qualifier event later today. Let's go, Charlie! I was a sophomore in high school, a tender little 15-year-old, tender age of 15, when Charlie, when uh, Tiger Woods got his multi-million dollar deal with Nike as a 21-year-old, uh, whatever he was. What's that thing? Golf. Golf player. Uh, United... With Israel, CNN shares a quote, United conducted a detailed safety analysis in making this decision. That's what United Airlines stated, announcing they'll resume flights from the United States to Israel beginning in March. Let's go. This makes uh, United the first major U.S. airline carrier to resume flights to the country. A, A step of faith, a vote of confidence following the October 7th Hamas terror attack so-called terror attack, I think it's a terror attack, ensuing war in Gaza, based money, 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 money. Heck yes. I think I'll wait it out a little longer before I take my trip to Israel, though. Who's with me? Speaking of trips, the moon mission, an unmanned spacecraft, is set to land on the moon today in the first U.S. lunar landing since the Apollo era, which was 1961 to 1972, first crewed flight, allegedly 1968. I think I believe it. The mission developed by NASA, which does not mean, uh, is not Hebrew for to deceive or to lie. (laughs) That's fake news, according to the fact checkers. And Houston-based Intuitive Machines, they aim to land Odi there at 5.50 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show today. The third hour. You can get involved by calling 888-7753. 773-888-77 Jesse. My biblical question. What's trapping you? What's 
trapping you? What's trapping you? Amazing, amazing question. We have every way that you can watch and support the show. List it on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're out and about doing whatever it is that you're doing, you can um, listen to the show. You can podcast, of course. But you can listen to the show on the listen line by calling eight, I mean 641 793 1500. 641 793 1500. All right? Anywhere in the world. And don't forget to follow us on social media like. Ring the bell, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Or rebuildingtheman.com slash store. Rebuildingtheman.com slash store. All right? So it's Bible Thumper Thursday right now. There is one line open at 888-7753-773. 888-77-JESSE. J-E-S-S-E. It's Bible Thumper Thursday. It's the third hour of Bible Thumper Thursday. So get ready for Bible Thumper Thursday. All right, brother. Are you ready? He's drunk as a badger. Go ahead. Let that Holy Ghost language come up out of you. Go ahead. Shut a lot, amiga. What the? Bible Thumper Thursday. So, uh, Joel, he black, is coming in, and my producer, Sean, coming in. And I want to deal with this question I asked er, ask, ask earlier this week. And, um, and then I want to get talk to you all, right, everybody, and the mama. <laughs> everybody, and they mama, if you're black. And it's their mama if you're white. And Joel is on his way in. I can hear him coming now. He black. Joel Fried, your TV is on. His show is every Monday through Thursday from 9, I mean, at 11 a.m., right after the Hake Report at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So, um... One day this week, earlier this week, I asked the question that I had got an understanding about finally. Not that I had been thinking about this question. It's Bible Thumper Thursday. Some of you might remember uh, in Mark 1, 40 through 44, a man with lepros leprosy came to him and begged, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him. And Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone. I'm healing you now, but don't tell anyone. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely. And Jesus went, what the? <laughs> Spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. 
I've never heard it written all like that before. Is it what Bible is this? Uh, no, I never heard that either. Uh, I think it's the new international version. Oh, there's no one. NIV. They're gonna mess it up. <laughs> and then is this Mark seven from the NIV too? Yeah. This is Sean, my producer. He did this. Uh, Mark seven to thirty one, thirty six. There are some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus to place his hands on him. After he took him away from the crowd, Jesus put his finger into his ears, the man's ears. At this, the man's ears were open. His tongue was loosened and he began to speak plainly. Then he commented, I mean, I'm sorry, then he commanded them that they should tell no one. But, but the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. Amazing. It's, he telling them, don't tell it. <laughs> Are they black? And they told it. <laughs> Here's some more information about the gospel of Mark from Pure Pew. Pursue. Pursue God's video. Watch this. See, the book of Mark is the shortest gospel of the four gospels. It's probably written around 55 AD. It's an action gospel with vivid descriptions and fewer teachings than the other gospels. So, for example, you'll see verses like this from Mark chapter 1. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea because they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Now let's talk a little bit about the author. The early church unanimously believed that this account was written by John Mark, who likely got his information from Peter's preaching and memoirs. Mark wrote this account to show the world who Jesus is and what he has done. The central theme of Mark is outlined in the first verse of the book. So here it is, Mark chapter one, verse one. Here's how Mark starts the book. This is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the son of God. Clear, concise, and compelling. The son of God. Yeah. See, all you people who think Jesus is God, the son. He is the son, not the father, dummies. What the? So I want to ask, ask, I'm going to start with Hassan again. I know he responded. When Jesus healed the man and he said, go and, I mean, don't tell anyone. And the man went and told it anyway. Why didn't Jesus, why did Jesus tell him not to tell anyone? Uh, yeah, I just think that, um, yeah, he just wanted, I think, people to know for themselves and have faith. Because the faith is what, you know, would heal them and that that they could do it on their own, you know, kind of understanding that uh, the belief and the faith in God is what's healing. And if they, I think if it would have became too publicized, it would have been like, oh, well, there's this magic man down the street, you know, let me go get my leg fixed or my thing. And it would have just became like a physical, practical thing where it's like, oh, this, you know got to come here to get my thing fixed or whatever and <laughs> i think he wanted it to be more of yeah like a genuine thing of knowing that they had faith and and belief in, in god and that they could be healed so he didn't want it to become like silly amazing <laughs> <laughs> why do you say jesus told me don't tell anyone i've healed you uh i think he didn't want to create in my opinion, I could be wrong. I think he didn't want to create This a is Joel Friday. That was her son, the audio engineer, the expert on the show. Joel Friday, the TV, he black. This show is here every day except Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And yeah. an expert here. Yeah, I think he just didn't want to cause like an uproar because of the fact that he knew that when um, the Pharisees or whoever were going to crucify him, that they were gonna do it. He knew that was a prophecy that there was that needed to happen. So I think that he didn't want that to come sooner than what it needed to by hey, making hey, a hey, ruckus. 
What are you? Oh. You're doing this like you're nervous. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. You're black. But let me fix it real quick. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think he didn't want to make yeah, it up. Yeah, move to your left. Well, when I had to move to my right at first. Down to your left and get to center. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay. Go ahead. Nice. But yeah, but the point is he was just trying to, <laughs> I think he just didn't want to make up uproar, so his time wouldn't come sooner than when it needed to be. I'm sorry? I think he just didn't want to make an uproar, so his time wouldn't have to come sooner than what it needed to be. What time? His crucifixion. <laughs> so he can heal as much people as possible. Amazing. But I could be wrong. No, I could be and that's nice. intellectual. Amazing. And you say, this is Sean, my producer, <laughs> expert here. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Sean, you say, I like, why did Jesus say don't tell? I like that last part about what, what Joel said, so his time to, wouldn't come sooner than, he, than it needed to be. But... Um, I think it's because he knew that people would go and say, oh, Jesus did this to me. Jesus did this to me. But it wasn't him. It was the Father working through him. So he knew people would get confused by that. Like, oh, they go into town. They say, Jesus healed me. Jesus healed me. But he knew, he knew Jesus knew it wasn't him. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. He knew people would be confused by the words and they'd misinterpret what, what just happened. So if he, he knew that it was more important for the people who got healed to, um, to just go through it on their own so that they know right. so that they know what actually happened. Amazing. That's more important than, than other people knowing. To add to what's been said, what I realized the reason he said it is that he told the man not to tell it. Because Jesus knew that the human being, human beings are like animals, that their hearts are evil, that they're wicked, and that if they went out and told them that they had been healed, they were going to try to uh, uh, discourage them and take that away from them and make them doubt themselves because human beings are evil. And uh, if you notice that every time somebody hears the truth, whether it's somebody reading the Bible or someone talking about this or that, every time they hear the truth, they want to go out and start preaching. <laughs> they start running, want to tell somebody else like they're a preacher, rather than being quiet and let the you know let it be revealed to them and become clear. Immediately they want to start preaching, and Jesus didn't want them to do that either. He knew that that would do it, but it was primarily because the human heart is evil, and they know that other human beings would try to make them doubt themselves. Try to steal their steal yep. from there. Isn't yep. that amazing? It is. You know how that you know how they say like if you want change in society, you gotta start locally. Yeah. Like start in your town. Yeah. Start in your town. You could take that another level and say you you gotta start in your house. Yeah. You gotta fix your house first. And then you could start take that to a whole nother level and say, You gotta start with you. Exactly. Instead of other people. When you start working on yourself, you wake up. You're supposed to really just keep it to yourself and grow. But the devil tell you, oh, you got to go out and tell somebody, tell them how smart you are. Start preaching. Yeah. Tell everybody, stop hating your mama. Tell everybody you hate your daddy. And return to your daddy. You're ready to preach. But all you've done is hurt the truth. You still don't know the truth. But yeah. the ego feels good to make you want to go out yeah, and preach. Involved, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. What do you say about that? The ego gets involved in all things. I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I mean, it's definitely... I mean, it's hard to really know exactly why. Like, no, that was why. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't. Because I mean, it's, if you it's really, something to think about. But I, it, if you really, really, really pay attention to human beings today, even yourself, me or anyone, when you first hear the truth, aren't you like Randy go tell yeah, somebody? Yeah, no, that that happens for right sure. Right away, I know you've done yeah. it. You just heard it intellectually. That's for yeah. sure. But it just feels so nice to go and tell yeah. somebody. Yeah. And make it seem like you're smart or you know what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah. Like you think you had it because you got the revelation. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that happened even today. I agree. And then if somebody, if you do know the truth and you go out and tell it, who you, there are people you're telling to, they're feeling jealous. They're mm -hmm. feeling mad like you know the truth. And they'll try to take it away from you. Yeah. And also when you know that the truth. That happened right now. Yeah. 
But when you actually know the truth, a lot of the times when you truly know it, you're not even like in a rush to go explain it or that's share. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's how you know the difference. That's deep. You say, Hassan? So what do you mean by they would try to Come take it? Come back to your mic. What do you mean they would try to take it away from... Uh, they would make you doubt yourself. They would uh, try to do something to make you think that it didn't really happen. He didn't heal you. Or you really don't see what you see. I don't think... That's what I mean by it. Oh, so like even in regards to Jesus? Yeah. Even... What do you mean by even in regards... Like, Oh, so you're saying that... Is he speaking too far away from his mic or somewhere? Just it does sound a little bit low. I don't uh -huh. know if it's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't there know. Go. That's I'm a little just, better. Maybe I don't understand. What? I'm trying to understand that. So you mean that the Jesus would have... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fully... Well, I got to hear it again, I think. Well, it, you could also make it worse by telling people the truth. You can make it worse for them because if they start rejecting the truth that you're telling them and you keep at it and you keep trying to get it, get it you keep trying to communicate it to them, you're making it worse because they just get defensive and they try to, they just do their own thing that they were going to do anyway just for their own ego purposes. Yeah. And you're not supposed to force it anywhere on anyone. Right, you can't, yeah, because you make it. You end up making it worse, and then you think you, you feel bad about you know yourself doing that because you think, oh, I, I made it worse for that other person. Oh, so like, okay, so I understand it in a parallel of like in today, like when I hear stuff you say, then I go and say, it and I get a thrill from it. Yep. So, so that I understand because completely. you've heard the truth, or your intellect tell you you got it. And right away, you want to go out and preach it to others so you can get a thrill from it. Yeah, 100%. But I do also, that. Also, oh, there are people out there that will uh, be jealous that you know the truth, mm. that your heart has changed from anger to love, and they'll try to destroy that. Okay, and you're saying that with Jesus... He knew that about human nature, that human beings are like animals. They're on an animal level. They're evil. And they could, they'll be jealous of that, and so they'll try to take that away from the person by trying to make them doubt themselves mm. or put them down in some kind of way or something because human beings are evil. Well, see, my only thing where I'm just a little bit confused is that, like, if a person is, like, a leper and he can't walk, and then Jesus said, get up and walk, and then he starts walking and dancing, right? Then how does a person at that point... <laughs> I just had an image in my head... Like when the person says, I could walk, and then the other person, another person says, no, that's not true. That's a lie. Do they just fall out? <laughs> Do they doubt and just fall out because the person made them doubt again? That's okay. where I'm confused. So what now? Like. He didn't say that they would do it. He didn't say they would be able to take it, but they would try. That they would try to. Oh, yeah. okay. Because I was wondering, jealous. Yeah, I just wonder, like. I just picture somebody walking and being happy they walk in. Somebody said, no, that's a lie. Jesus is not real. And then they just fall out again. But you know how <laughs> there there could be witnesses there to see this man. They knew him forever. He couldn't walk. Yeah. And they'll see Jesus come by and heal him. And then they'll still say Jesus didn't do that. Yeah. No, that's for sure. Yeah. And it, they've, they did that in the in the Bible, it says, too. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> what a yeah, mess. And once you, like, you know, once you uh, believe, you can't unbelieve. Once what you, you see, see you can't unsee it. Right. So once they believe that they can walk, they start walking. No matter what anyone else says, like they can't go back. But it's, it's amazing how. Go ahead, finish your point. I was going to bring something else up. Yeah, it's amazing how wicked the human heart is. The human heart is pure evil, really. Human be I had no idea how evil human beings really were until I was able to see. They have no love. They are like animals. Yep. Amazing. Yeah, it's all Adam's fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Eve's fault. Adam shouldn't have listened to the woman. Yes, that's where you're about to say something else. Is it better to um, disturb comfortable people or is it better to comfort disturbed people 
So what? Is it better to disturb the comfortable or is it better to comfort the disturbed? Is it better to disturb the comfortable or is it better to... Comfort the disturbed. Comfort disturbed people. Oh. And what did Jesus do? Interesting. Did he disturb comfortable people or did he comfort disturbed people? You say it, Joel? Uh... <laughs> Uh, that's a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> I think he disturbed the comfortable. Because, like, the the comfort, the other way around. What's the other way around? Comfort disturbed people. I don't think that you should comfort disturbed people. You let them suffer and die. So I think he he did the he other said, thing. He said, is it better to, am I right? Is, yeah, it, is, better it, is to, it better to comfort to the, the, to comfort the disturbed. The disturbed or disturb the comfort people. I think disturb the comfort, but I got to smoke on it more, but I think that's, that's my final answer. What will you say, Hassan? Definitely, yeah, disturb the comfortable. And what will you say, Sean? I say comfort the disturbed. I say neither. That's Dang. not the question. Yeah, that's the no. good answer. It's not better. I, you're not supposed to disturb the uncomfortable or comfort, I mean, or yeah, you're not supposed to. You're saying you're not supposed to disturb comfortable people, and right. you're not supposed to comfort disturb. Not people. at all. You messed up the whole game. You're supposed to play along. Pick one. But I think uh, no, no. <laughs> but that you know. But truth, truth, I think is disruptive to like to, to evil people. Yeah, and to people who are just sleeping, like yeah. not not comfortable could be like not awake, like just. So I think like yeah. Yeah, there's huh. a there's a a famous quote about art and how the purpose of art is to comfort the disturbed and to disturb the comfortable. Oh. So that's where I got that from. Oh, I see. Just nice. a quick question on the Jesus thing. Yeah. So uh, what about the the lady who grabbed the string of his garment and then she was healed just by touching the fabric of right. Jesus? Right. D so do you think any of that has to do with the faith that the person has in God or in the 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 power of God that that has to do with the healing. Well, she believes she believed that if she can, in advance she had heard about this guy, and she believed that if she could just touch him, she could be healed, and it was because of her faith. And when you come back to the Father, you start living that way without any doubt at all. Yeah. No matter what situation happens, no matter whether it's happening inside of you or outside of you, inside of us, you have no doubt at all. And can no one stop you? And believe me, they try. So what do you think, I just thought about this, what do you think about that Jesus actually has nothing to do with anything? Like, obviously, we needed him to do what he did, but what if it was just more so about faith? Who? What if it was more so about faith? What What if it wasn't even about? What if there was no importance on Jesus's being in human oh, form, see. and it was just mainly about people realizing that it's you? I got. It. But it's before not Jesus. Jesus came, there was nothing to believe in. There was no way out. Right. So, but do you think that people now put this over importance on Jesus being the reason when it was the faith? Which oh, is I see. The reason. The belief, yeah. You're yeah. Right. They made Jesus out of God, so they focus on the physical person rather than the spirit. Right. And that's why they maybe they think that's why he, he is the God and <laughs> what the Oh man. So, um uh, okay. Yeah. So it, so what do you think that her touching the garment is almost metaphorically to the spirit of Jesus? Or yeah. was okay, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize it, Jesus was more about the spirit, healing the spirit. And they use physical example, but it's really about the spirit, healing inwardly. Um, I do want to tell Sean this. Terry, T E R R I, in the chat says, Sean has beautiful. <laughs> glowing white 
Skin. Hey. <laughs> That's some incredible Shout out. stuff. Shout out to Terry. <laughs> Beautiful, glowing, white skin. Yep. That Irish, uh, Irish in me. <laughs> uh, hate said journalists think their that their mission is to do both those things, like what you mentioned, which is best to yeah whatever. comfort yeah yeah he think he said the the journalists think they should do both. Journalists think that they should do both. Their mission is to do both of those things. Interesting. Let's take Jeff real fast mm. out of Arizona. Jeff, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Hey, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff's going once. Jeff's going twice. Hello, hello. Oh, <laughs> bless I almost got it. <laughs> Jeff, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Hey, how you doing, man? All is well. Okay. Um, okay, I wanted to uh, uh, chime in a little on that, um, on what you guys are talking about with, um, uh, hold on here, uh, touching Jesus' garment and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And then uh, that Jesus Christ isn't God. All right. Yeah. So... I wanted to ask one, what, uh, your uh, definition of one word in the Bible. Uh, it's uh, Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? Sound like a Christmas song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What, what does it what, mean? What is the, uh, the meaning of Emmanuel in Hebrew? Uh-huh. Is what? God with us. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, it says here, since it's Bible Thumper Thursday, <laughs> <laughs> therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And that's in uh, Isaiah chapter 14, chapter 7, verse 14. What do you think about that? What do you think about yeah, that? What's your point in bringing that point. up? I don't right. know the point. What's that? What do you think about that? What's your point in bringing that up? And, and well, you, I think you know what my point is um, as far as what we're talking about, Jesus being God. So that was the kind of the... Oh, you, know, you the, that that made you, that, that caused you to believe that Jesus was God? No, but um, it doesn't cause me to think that. That's just a, a talking point I wanted to bring up. And what, yeah. did, what did you think about Mark 1.1 1, 1, when it clearly says Son of God? What do I think of that? I think Jesus Christ is Son of God, yeah. Oh, perfect. We yeah. agree. Hold on, Jeff. <laughs> the treasure chest is now open on D-Live. Jeff made me more confused. Check out my I don't know book, what Rage and Responsibility. Know, I show you how I was able to overcome anger. The spirit of anger was taken away from me. I had it. And as a result of having anger, I was insecure. I had doubt, worry, fear. I was in a fallen state and didn't know it. And it wasn't until I went and forgave my mother who tried to turn me away from my father. I forgave my father for not being there and returned back to him. My spirit connected with his spirit and through him, I was able to return to God. And I have perfect peace. Perfect love cast out anger. And when anger is gone, fear and doubt, worry, insecurity, suicidal thoughts, all of that is gone and you are free. Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, or if you want an autographed copy, you can go to my website at rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-BOND.
Okay, welcome back. Quick announcement. Quick announcement. The Hake Report, excuse me, the Hake Report is coming up at the top of this hour. The Hake Report. Dot com from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And James Hake is on fire. From 9 to 11 and after Hake, Joel Friday TV, you black. At 11 a.m. Pacific time. What are you dealing with today? Uh, check, check. We're getting into the Bible today. Oh, <laughs> we're getting into the knowledge of good and evil. <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> At 11 a.m., Joel Friday TV from 11 to 12. And then at 12 noon, the American Anchor Baby. And the American Anchor Baby is on fire at 12 noon. You don't want to miss it. All right? And tomorrow, if the Lord is willing and the creeds don't rise, brand new episode of the Fallen State TV. The Fallen State TV. I don't see it here. It was taken out, Sean. No. What the? So that lady that said you had the beautiful glowing. <laughs> <laughs> she spoke too soon. Yeah, it was Rebecca Contreras. You must heard what she said and took it out. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. <laughs> uh, anyway, I had a conversation with Rebecca Contreras, a conservative Christian lady. Yeah. From the hood to the White House. Oh, yeah, from the hood to the White House. Watch this. Next time on The Fallen State. Jesse, the gift of salvation saved my life. I was a very angry young adult and as a result ended up pregnant at 17 on drugs. We should forgive so that God can forgive us. Do you believe in the order of God? I do very much. And what's that order? Well, do you obey your husband? He's not the head of me because I have my own head. <laughs> I noticed that women don't have love. That makes me really sad for you, Jesse. You need to meet more women that have love. What a mess. <laughs> Tomorrow at 12 noon, the fallestate.tv. And you should support the Father State by going to the fallestate.tv slash donate or uh, um, locals. Dot com. Just click the description in the link there. Uh, let me go quickly back to Jeff. Jeff hey, Jeff. Oh, perfect. We agree. Uh, Jeff got some issues. He, he, he's listening to the show in the background. And that's what it is? That's what it was. It was oh. Sean. Okay. Last word. Yeah, I think that people like uh, Jeff, and I could be wrong about him specifically, <laughs> but there's this false pedestal. Thing that people put on Jesus to make him to be more than what he is when he even said that he's the son of man he even said that he was in human form and he even said that we'll do greater things but people love to attach God and all these miracles to Jesus as if it's unattainable and making him out to be way more important than what he needs to be but it sounds like Jeff was saying he didn't believe that Jesus was God no he said he believes that 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 Emmanuel thing is saying that he is God. Oh, uh-uh. I'm confused. <laughs> Last word. Um, do you believe that everything is exactly as it should be? Yes, but it's in our stuff. Absolutely. All right. That's my last word. <laughs> Hassan, last word. Um, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and Hassan got the Jesus shirt, too. <laughs> and, uh, my experts, folks, let me hear from my experts. Amazing. Nice. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let me go to Pete out of Alaska. Pete, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I, I almost don't even know why I'm calling. You guys kind of summed it all up right there. Uh, you know how words kind of play with the mind and such. Uh, and people say, since I woke up or whatever, but then you got the opposite side of the culture saying, get woke. Uh, I I would think a better way to say as is to, as I come to understand, as opposed to woke up, because there's always discovery, you know, you always come to new understanding as you, as you grow. 
uh, especially if you're, you're seeking peace, you know, uh, and, uh, I, I got one eyeball and the other one's a prosthetic, right? Uh, and in essence, you guys are kind of doing this, the same thing that Jesus did if, uh, as far as healing the blind, because I don't think it was a, you know, actual visual impairment, but a spiritual impairment. Yeah. And so it's not necessarily, you know, somebody with their, you know, can't see out their eyeballs. They just, they're just not seeking spiritually, you know, which makes them blind. Yeah, absolutely, uh, man. And that kind of brings me to the biblical question. What's trapping you? I don't feel so trapped these days, but in, in the past, uh, I think I understand it as uh, the ego and the wicked nature that, you know, I'm overcoming. And, uh, and I'm gaining a lot of that through paying attention to what you guys have to say, and then your your callers as well. You can see a lot of yourself in callers if if you're paying attention instead of just That's true. looking at them as this other individual. Pay attention. That's why the, the biblical questions are so awesome, you know, because they're doing just as you designed it to be. Uh, have you pay attention to yourself? Absolutely. And, uh, know thyself. Uh, yeah, sometimes I wish I was your sidekick in there, but uh, <laughs> one day, maybe, uh, you never know. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Things have uh, a strange way of working out. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I hope all your listeners and the listeners to come are blessed, uh, biblically on Bible Thumper Thursday. Uh, but I was wondering if you could, uh, let us hear what our next president has to say this, this morning. <laughs> Real fast, let me check. Let me check out the Great White Hope. Tomorrow they will say, Donald Trump rants and raves at the press. I'm not ranting and raving. I'm just telling you. You know, you're dishonest people. Amazing. God bless America. <laughs> God bless America. Thank you, Pete. Right. I appreciate yep. it, man. Thank you, man. All right, buddy. Amazing. 888-7753-773. Colin out of Tennessee. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse, thanks for taking me. Yes, sir. Yes, um, so I just wanted to chime in about uh, this whole conversation. Um, I, it's just fascinating to me. Um, I've kind of, like, been listening to your show, well, not kind of, I've been listening to your show for a while and forgave my mother and father and um, got really excited about this kind of uh, being free in that way and trying to... Uh, kind of deliver the same type of message to other people. And uh, I noticed that uh, no one wants to hear it. <laughs> yeah, that's why God wants you to be quiet and not try to save people, but just let people live in their hell. We are not our brother's keeper, so people can stay in their hell until, it, until or if they decide that they're ready to overcome it. Because when you try to force it on them, or even if you try to tell them they want to hear, you th it's like throwing pearls to swine. They don't want to hear that. Right. Yeah. So I'm just curious, at some point, you obviously started sharing your message, uh, or this message, um, with with folks, and it seemed like the hell comes out of everyone when I, when I attempted to just not even bobble dump or anything, but just tell people to forgive, right? Right. Um, and um, I'm sure that you've mentioned it before, you know, many times that, you know, the devil sent his children after you. Um, and that definitely happened to me in, in ways I won't even get into because it takes too long. Um, but I was real and intense. And, um, you know, I guess you just observe it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. When that happened, Colin, and the devil will, he will work inside of you to try to make you doubt, give up, let go, stop, or whatever, right? Because he doesn't want to depart from you. And if that doesn't work, he will work through other people to go after you. He will find others, other people who are jealous and uh, envious and 
filled with revenge and he will use them. And they may not even realize that they're, they're being used by evil, right? Yeah. But he will use them to go after you as well. And when that happens, just recognize it's not them, but it's the hell that's in them. And you move on with your life. And don't fight with the devil at all. There's never a reason to fight with the devil. Lay your weapons down. Yeah, I like what you were saying. Uh, it's like uh, with the biblical question, I guess it was last week, where uh, why does the devil allow you, or why does God allow the devil to attack you? And you, your idea was, or response was that it's just the devil attacking the devil. Right. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. Absolutely. The devil cannot attack the real you. He tried to attack the fake you, not the real you. But he thinks it's the real you, but he want to hurt you because you're the son of God. You're, you're, and he hates the, the children of God. Amazing. Well, I guess that's about it. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate <laughs> Amazing. you. Amazing. Thank you very much. All right. Bye. You're welcome. Steven is the first. There's one line open, 888 Five three seven seven three. Stephen, a first time caller out of Cleveland, Ohio. Stephen, welcome going, to the Jeff? show. How's it going? All is well. Great. Just a little background about me. I'm I'm 20 years old, so um, I've been listening to the show for uh, probably about six, seven months now. And you know, I woke up around that time. So you know, praise to you. You know, what I'm saying not praise to you, but you know. Yeah. You're right. So, uh, so my question would be: It says in the Bible that Jesus wept three times, and um, uh, I want to know, like, wouldn't that be emotional? Like, wouldn't that be emotion? And wouldn't emotion be of the devil? So, like, how? Why, why would Jesus weep? Like, what is the point of Jesus weeping? Well, he he wept because the people were blind and could not see, and but he didn't. The, the one mistake that human beings make, they think that Jesus and his Father God, their, their uh, what they call emotions and stuff, are on the same level as human emotions. And they keep it there because they don't realize that human emotions are evil, the ones that make you feel good and the ones that make you feel bad. And so because they can't see, they try to put Jesus on the same level, and that's where the devil okay. wants them. Okay, so that that's like somebody personifying it. So yes. Okay, that makes sense. Amazing. Okay, all right. That's my question then. All right, thank you, buddy. Yep. Thank you. All right. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three J out of New Hampshire. J, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey Jesse, how we doing, guys? All is well, uh, J. Awesome. Let me fix my phone here. There we go. All right. So I love the discussion you guys are just having about, um, is it like um, you were saying, what was um, Sean's question there? He said, is it better to um, to disturb the, the, like the, what, to wake up the disturbed or to disturb the, the patient? What was it? Oh, he asked, is it, which is better to disturb the comfort or the, to dis to disturb the comfortable? Is it better to comfort the disturb yeah, or yeah. disturb the comfort? This was such a good question. What's awesome about this, right, that I, it was, like, revealed right away as soon as it was uh, asked. Um, ask! Is the, yeah, ask! <laughs> the, uh, the, the truth, it, it does both of those things without the intent of doing those things. Jesus walked with the disturbed, and it brought them comfort because they could see the truth, and they, some of them woke up. And the ones that were evil, that thought they were already saved, were disturbed because the people weren't following them anymore. It, was, it just did it on its own. Very interesting point, man. Um, and Amazing. then I did have a question. <laughs> I did have a question about the um, silent prayer. Okay. <laughs> I've been listening now, you know, and doing the silent prayer for probably a little over two years. And as I've been, like, doing it, I find... Is this is this strange or odd? Like I find myself needing it less because I find myself like as soon as I wake up, I just watch all the time. I don't like need to like discipline myself to sit anymore. It's like I'm doing it like all day long. I just watch everything that goes on now all the time. 
It's almost it's just like silent praying all the time. So it's, it's it's like I don't need to like train myself to sit and do it. I just watch life and watch what happens within myself and just always go, okay, cool, thanks for showing me that. You know, like I, zero reaction to any of it. Well, one thing for sure and without a doubt, if you can watch what's happening inside of you 24 hours a day, you are in the prayer. That's what it means to pray without That's- ceasing. That means to be conscious and not to go unconscious. Okay, that's what I thought. So, yeah. and of course, uh, questioning myself that Satan's trying to get one last little thing in there. I, <laughs> I see it. <laughs> and I'm just yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't fall for it. Satan is. You know, no, exactly. Because I tried explaining it to my wife. Like, cause she's like, well, she's, cause she's been trying to, you know, she's working on herself slowly but surely. And she's like, well, what? You know, because she's like, I see you do it sometimes for a half an hour, like in the like when you get home from work. She goes, like, what what goes on in your mind? And I go, honestly, a whole lot of nothing. It's it, it's actually just like pe- very peaceful. I'm like, every once in a while, a thought will come across, but I don't identify with it, and and usually that same type of thought won't come back because it's it's almost like the devil's trying to throw whatever he can. And when it doesn't stick, that's God allowing it to just leave because God knows that I know. Yeah, it's just God watch it. Me. Absolutely. Right. Thank yeah. you, man. I appreciate All it. Right. Okay. You got it. God bless you. Amazing, Jay. Uh, let, uh, super chat. Super chat. Super, super. Super chat. Mr. Pink bought a coffee to answer the biblical question. What's trapping you? I used to feel, tra- I used to feel trapped by the groups and identities, but after hearing JLP's advice about not comparing yourself to others, the chains of my mind are falling off every day. Jeremiah 5.26. Amazing. Thank you. I'll put my little two cents in on Sunday. Amazing. Neat. Bought a coffee. Answer to the BB biblical question. What's tapping you? Uh, the memory of Jesse got me <laughs> locked up. Won't let me out. Throw away the key and leave me in my H-E double toothpicks. <laughs> What the? <laughs> I cleaned it up a bit. You got to keep them clean, buddy. But thank thank you. you. I appreciate it. Cactus Eater Bear gave a diamond. People with AT and T are having phone outages today. Indeed, that's what I've heard. Yeah, I, I woke up to that news this morning, and I, I mentioned it in the first hour of my show as well. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Urinal Chills is a monthly supporter on Rumble. Did you know you can do that? That's why I say no whipped cream. I don't want to use a darn straw. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Someone bought a coffee. Hi, Jesse. Big fan for the better part of a year. Right on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Urinal Chills, another rumble rant. Jesse used to say mamas these days are horny for their sons. So what? Mamas these days are horny for they their are. sons. They are. It's the darnest thing I've ever seen. They're trying to make the sons their husbands. Amazing. Thank you. He says that demon woman was babbling the whole time she was on hold. LOL. I felt sorry for her king. <laughs> Thank you. C on C bought three coffees that call her about the foreigners taking over with no English. DoorDashers also. They're everywhere. Americans don't want to work, so they're taking the job. I just saw a security guard with the hijab with the Allah U Akbar LOL straight up from Ilhan Omar's country from the refugee camp in Kenya. Wow, what a mess. It's going to bring trouble on the land, though. It's not going to be good. It's, it's unfortunate. Thank you, C.I. LOL, Jesse Pookie, smiley face. Dance again, please. Love you. Amazing. Uh, C.I.? Uh-huh. Thank you, C.I. <laughs> what the? Charlotte bought a coffee. Hey, Jesse, what are your thoughts on the Apostles' Creed? Is a brief c- summary of Christianity. The Creed also includes the distinction between Jesus Christ, the Son, and, the God, and God the Father. What's the Creed? The Apostles' Creed. What's that? I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, and in his Son who wrote, died and rose to give us peace. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Something, something, something. Is that a Catholic thing? Uh-huh. <laughs> Catholics do it too, yeah. And who else do it? Other, Christ- other normal Christians. Oh, they do? Mm-hmm. I never heard of that. I probably butchered the lyrics. Amazing. Thank you, though. I've never heard of it. Okay. I'll look it up for you. Okay. Canadian David, Israel isn't ready for Ginger Jesus. I think he's (laughs) calling me that because United Airlines is flying to Israel now. Oh, really? Yeah, they're the first airline to go back to Israel uh, since that Hamas. Are they still having a war over there? Oh, yeah. 
Amazing. But Thank I guess you. it's safe in, again enough for them to fly. Uh, amazing. Thank you. Charles uh, bought that coffee. Thank you, Charles. Anna Thank bought you, three coffees. Jesse, day after I s- started doing the silent prayer, I now wake up between 2 and 3 a.m. every morning without an alarm to find myself doing the silent prayer in peace. It's amazing. What's happening? Right on. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. You'll be fine. It's working. Amazing. Uh, shout out to the top contributors on D Live: Cactus Eater Bear, Enoch eighty seven something, Zealous Hermit, and the rest of the D Live crew. Appreciate your support. Thanks, Thank guys. You That's all. all for now. Amazing. Thank you so much. The Hake Report is coming up at the top of this hour. Lynn is out of Oklahoma. Lynn, you're on the air. Thank you, Jesse. You're welcome. How are you? How are you? Now I've heard you say you're all as well. All <laughs> as well, Lynn. Amazing. Thank you. Um, well, I think it's pretty appropriate that I might call on Bible Thumper Thursday. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I was born a Bible Thumper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> that's funny. And, and I've overcome it now. I've transcended that. R- right on. Now, and um, it's because of your message. And I will say, I can't tell you how m- how my life has changed. Just, it's amazing. And uh, the things that <clears throat> I've gotten through. I, I mean, the things that you can't imagine. I, I, I've had um, all of these things happen, and it, each one of them, I just, I do what you say. I do what's in front of me, but I don't worry, and right. I don't get have fear. I mean, I, none of that. Now, it tries to come. Right. You know, it tries to set in, and, and people don't, they don't help because they see the situation and they say, oh my God, what, you know, what has just happened to me? Yeah. And uh, so that, that makes it worse. But the, uh, am I, yeah, I'm sorry, am I yelling? No, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Oh, okay. Well, I feel like I'm talking really loud. I, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I wanted to tell you, thank you. Um, I found you when I, uh, well, I had this uh, one traumatic thing happen and um, I had a, a break with my aunt and now my my grandma was dead my mama was dead and my aunt and i went on a trip and then all he double two sticks broke loose like (laughs) as james would say um and um i found you while i didn't have a car or about I, i my car was i was having a new engine put in it and um i was just i had to sit home all the time and i I stumbled on the radio show. This is 2019. And I I didn't, you know, I mean, I believed everything you said. I mean, I I knew it was true yeah. somewhere. But yeah. I, but I over the years and over the months and the weeks and listening and testing my own life, seeing the people around me and seeing, just seeing humanity, um, I was I was able it was able to come into focus for me. Right like, on. It, like now like now it's mine. That's now it right. To me and, and no one can take it. <laughs> That's right, Lynn. Let me tell you this, Lynn, the the computer's gonna cut us off and uh we at the end of the show, but amazing uh, testimony. Call me if you, you can. Jesse. Call me again soon. I will. I will. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks, you're, guys. You're welcome. Amazing. Bye. Bye now. I am so out of time. The hate report coming up now. And after the hate, Joel fried the TV at 11. And then at 12, the American Anchor Baby. Thank you for your super chats and your support at rebuildingtheman.com. Bond, rebuildingtheman.com. Uh, Andela, uh, Andela out of Africa, Mommy Africa, South Africa. Joel, first time caller out of Massachusetts. And the other calls has just dropped. I am out of time. Tomorrow is open line Friday. I'll be back tomorrow. The Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. Get on that straight and narrow and stay there. No matter what, what the devil try to do to you on the inside of you and on the outside of you, inside of others, stay there. Have a good one, folks. Thank you. Baba Thumper.
So here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Like my cousin like sent me you and I, I thank him for that. It was more of a you know, he thinks the whole but on like every, everything's a joke. That just adds a little <laughs> spice to it. But in the heart of what you're saying, yeah, there is real things going on. And yeah. People wanna overlook that and yeah. I'm telling you, Mr. Peterson, I'm not one of those people and I thank God that, you know, he showed you to me and sometimes we just need some dressing in our lives, I guess. Thank you know, you, I correct. wish we had more brothers like you. We need more brothers like you. This because a lot of we don't have more most guys that can, you know, stand lead black people into the right direction. And I thank you for that because a lot of people will be like, man, it's still going on. It's racism. Yeah. And I try to tell them, like, watch his show. Listen to this brother. He's telling the truth. Take no thought about tomorrow. Yesterday doesn't exist. And you're going to see, man, God is with us and all yeah. is well.